Starting off strong with a uh, a nice sponsorship from Mr. Damien. Whoop, whoop. Mr. Damien Williams. Thank you so much for 21 months of supporting this oh, channel. Dang. Yeah. Um, well, welcome, everyone. Uh, I am joined tonight by just Bob. <laughs> What's going on, Bob? Uh, I'm good. I just ran uh, some games last night into the late night. Uh, Life's a little crazy, but I, I'm here. It's a little cold, but I'm here. Yeah. So again, we, um, you know, we we're going to be talking tonight about Dragon Bane, uh, but it's just Bob and I tonight. So we got a, a little bit of a different angle for the for the shot. I don't know. We'll see. I think yeah. it's a pretty cool shot. Yeah. Um, I did apply my new. I did apply Knights of the Last Call sticker to my new laptop. Oh, nice. So now now it's well, although we're now guess, it looks official when you're it up looks there. official yeah, yeah. when I'm out there. Um, Trevco says he's still loving the I hair. mean, it was a rush. I was brushing my teeth as my wife was braiding it. Yeah, you you got here about five minutes yeah. before um, it, it's, we went It's live. been something. It's been live. But um, <laughs> anyways, welcome, everyone, back to the channel. Uh, of course, if this is your first time with us, welcome. We are the Knights of Last Call. We are a channel that talks about t tabletop role-playing games. We play them. We philosophize about them. We review them. We do deep dives. We basically do everything TTRPG related. I mean, I was a D&D &D guy. And then I became a Pathfinder guy. Now I'm like literally running games like without you guys. 
Like, right. I'm like, I'll just run this other game that like barely anybody's played. I got you to play one of my games of a system you never even played. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a great. I'm, I'm growing. <laughs> yeah, no, this this is a good example of a game where uh, I, you know, I don't have any experience with it. Uh, you don't. Uh, Smith doesn't have any experience Correct. with it. You got interested into it. You know, we can get into sort of what you know why, what the whys and wherefores of that. Um, but we'll we'll definitely talk about the game now. As part of my whole new laptop shtick, um, so my old <laughs> laptop had an HDMI port. My new laptop does not have an HDMI port, and so I bought a USB-C to HDMI uh, cable connector. Here it is. Um, but I couldn't figure out how to make it work, so we couldn't output my laptop to the screen, which we've yep. done sometimes, so we could like fly around the PDF with you. Um, so we're not going to have that available for us tonight. Instead, we just have this um, this uh, the character sheet, which we can definitely talk about, and which is really. Look, you could. You, that's all you really need because you could talk about the rules enough to correct. really go. It's, it's, really. A, it's a rules light enough game. And if you want to go deeper into it, obviously we in our Patreon, uh, like there's a whole channel uh, and other games where we're talking about Dragon Bane. So correct. Um, so, uh, anyways, here we are. Um, that's right. We're Ke here. Keith is here, and Keith just subscribed to the channel, oh. and it's his first time live. Well, welcome, Keith. Who published Dragon Bane Free League? Yeah. So. Yeah, so this we, is the second edition, as far as I'm aware, correct? Well, my understanding of it is... and we, Where's we, Goblins at? We, we can talk a little about this. <laughs> this is an old game. Correct. Now, Back Free in League, 1982. Yeah, so Free League, Free Aliga, is a... Um, are they Norwegian? They, they have to be, as far as I'm aware. They're, they're Scandinavian. I don't know if they're Sweden or if they're Norway. Um, they're somewhere up in there. Mm -hmm. But they have been... This, is, this has been sort of... You know, uh, the North Country's version of D&D, Swedish. Thank you, Shadram um, and Gurney. Uh, this has sort of been Sweden's version of, of Dungeons and Dragons for about the last, you know, 40 plus years. Yeah. And it, it's Swedish, but it, it, they're, the Swedish name, which I'm not going to try to butcher, is like Damon und Draken or something. Uh, Draco och Demoner. Right. Which basically is instead of Dungeons and Dragons, it's. Dragons and demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that carries through even to the this version of the game where nat ones are called dragons, right, and nat twenties are called demons. demons. Yeah, right. Which is super fun. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's um, wild. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I can't really tell you that much about the old version of the game uh, because I never played it. Correct. But obviously, I am very familiar with Free League, and while this game is not what I would call a year zero engine, correct. It is not. It's much closer to the actual D20. Yes, it's much closer to D20, sort of. Much closer to D20 than I would say Year, year Zero. Oh, yes, correct. <laughs> Whereas, So when you think about Year Zero engine, you're thinking Forbidden Lands, yep. you're thinking Mutant Year Zero, you're thinking um, uh, Tales from the Loop, you're mm -hmm. thinking all those games. Uh, you're thinking of, of Aliens. You're thinking a dice pool of D6s. You're rolling them. Sixes is a success. A one uh, is, a, is a bane. But you can push your roll and gather up the dice and roll it again. So there are some... Oh, I mean, Free League does... They have their ideas. <laughs> yeah, they, they have their ideas. And some of them work very well. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, this game, this version of the game, just debuted at Gen Con mm -hmm. 2023. I was there. Yep. I saw a lot of people playing it. I didn't play it. You he, know why I didn't play it? Because of this cover. I didn't play it because of that cover, okay? I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the cover is that of a duck. And it's not looks, just any duck, okay. Darkwing duck, it it's looks, not. <laughs> okay, but you got to admit that particular that particular duck looks exactly like Do I have the table shop set up? No, I do not. Okay. But okay, everyone so, knows. Okay. <laughs> it looks like Darkwing Duck. I grew up watching Darkwing. Darkwing Duck. When you're in trouble, you can call, right? I watched it. Darkwing that. Duck. There you go. And uh, it looked like Darkwing Duck. And yep. I was like, look, I don't have time for this weird anthropomorphic thing. So, whatever. Yeah. Now, that's, I'm, not, I'm not crapping on the game specifically because of that. Correct. You just were like, okay, well, I don't uh, I'm judging this book by its cover I a little bit. I'm judging this book by its cover. I'll just cover. go to the next thousand games that I have to look at today. Correct. <laughs> I'll go to the next thousand games. Um, and so... Uh, you know, all I'll say is let you know. <laughs> Let's get dangerous. I saw that Coach, that's so good. <laughs> um, I think I might have said that in our in our one session. Um, it's great. Anyways, so you know, I, I didn't want to get involved with it, but I heard a lot of positive press about the game coming out of Gen Con, and we had one of our most esteemed patrons, mm -hmm. GM Scott. Love GM Scott. Love GM Scott, and he got into the game because his group is a little bit more casual 
Well, and, he, and he play tested it at Gen right, Con. and he had an opportunity. Unlike me, You're correct. He did not judge the yes. book. He was like, I'll, t- "I'll take a gander." Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did not duck out. Oh, and um, he decided to go in and give it a you know give it a whirl, and he enjoyed it. And he came back. I, I had no idea what to expect. Correct. But he came back saying, "Wow, this is super. It's fl- fight, fast paced. Uh, a really you know simple engine of resolution. Felt like a real good beer and pretzels game. Yes, specifically." He has a different game that he runs every week or every other week. I'm not sure. And for whatever reason, the game, uh, one of the players or two of the players couldn't make it, so the game was going to get canceled. And he goes, you know what? I can I can put run this system for the other two or three guys very quickly. And so he's he said, I, I can run this through. He, he read the rules really quickly. He knew he played it. He gave them like a 30-minute quick synopsis, maybe even less than that, about how to play the game. And then they ran with it, and he said they all had a great time. It was super casual, like really could just pick it up and run. And yep. so that's when he t- messaged us and was like, I don't know about you guys, but this seemed real like casual beer and pretzels. And now I, I just, what did you say, beer and pretzels? Because that's exactly, I, yeah. when I'm not playing with Derek and Smith, my home group is way more casual. Right. Like they are board gamers and video gamers. Yeah, and, and, and let's, if you've never heard of that term before, yeah. uh, you know. What is people, beer and pretzels? You know, what is beer? So beer and pretzels is the idea of a style of game where, I mean, quite frankly, it's, it's you, you know, you can imagine everyone's drinking a beer and there's a big bowl of pretzels on the game. That's right. Put it table. It's, it's a much more casual style of game. It's more about hanging out, yep. having fun. Um, it's not about necessarily the uh, super in-depth, complicated game. It's probably not about a super un you know in depth role playing correct story narrative arcs you know you're not you're coming not, you're, you're not, not coming. doing math as super hard when you're getting a couple of beers deep correct <laughs> yes. yeah and maybe that's another good way to that's phrase how it. I think of it, it, it is, is it a game that you could play when you're a couple of beers deep you know which I, are my buddies I I, <laughs> I can't I can barely play Pathfinder Second Edition when sober. I'm sober exactly and so if God forbid if I were to have like two or three and beers. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> right. So the first time you start calculating that, um, it becomes kind of a pain in the butt. So that alone, I think, uh, is a pretty cool premise. Yes. Um, and, and you know, we we see light games come out all the time. There are light games. Correct. You know, like ru- Super Rules light games, BX, D&D, and stuff like that. These Which are very, I enjoy. Right. These are very simple, mm-hmm. lightweight games. But there's some fun tech, mm-hmm. you know, f- some fun game tech in this game that I think does – Give it a unique place yep. in the pantheon of like, you know, of course, if I want to just get together, hang out and play some you know real classic school d and I'll pull out BX D&D Correct. or Labyrinth Lord or, you know, hell, maybe one of these days I'll give Shadow Dark a try. But there is something about this game which kind of taps into some of the free league elements that we yes. were talking about yep. that I really think uh, is great and, and kind of gives the game a real fun vibe to it. One of the things they, they knocked out of the park it, as they do in their other free league products, because I... I I don't know why, but I'm on a free league kick right now. And I I, I read what other games you watch. Well, I looked through Symborium. Oh right, right. Symborium. Symborium. I don't know how to pronounce it. And then and then uh, we had talked about free league, and I read Symborium because of the art. I just wanted to look through because the art was so creepy and cool. Um, The system was fine, and then I read free league because it was suggested and and it sounded interesting. We were going to maybe play it, and I was like, this artwork and the book is amazing, and then. I get the beer and pretzels book, and I flip in love this artwork. This artwork, yeah, to me, just I mean, as they are just nailing it, I think with a lot of their products, is they just grab this art and run with it, and it's throughout this whole book, it's throughout the maps, the bestiary, everything, and maybe that's why I'm leaning into because I'm very visual, um, but they do a really good job with it, and um, yeah, I mean, I went. I felt I, I liked looking through it with that first, and then obviously the rules. Reading the rules, I'm not the best reader. Um, it was very light, very easy to read through, very easy to understand, and then I think that translates really well to the table. And yeah. again, I think again when I when, this necromancer looks awesome. You know yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean again, we're going to get certainly. You know, we got two hours. We can get into some oh, of the yeah. mechanics of stuff. But I will say this: a couple things before we go full deep. One, it 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 definitely has a free league art mm-hmm. style, but with this really. You know, a lot of the stuff in Forbidden Lands is black and white. Yes, which, which I thought was beautiful. Great. There is this like very muted browns and greens color tone to yes. these books and to the art. And I just found it really compelling. It's got this like color pencil y sketchy yes. look to it. It's like it's, it's trying a- to be just serious enough, but like it's yeah. It's like a it's almost like how you like to quick sketch a whiteboard. It's yeah. like they're doing that, but it's I don't know, it, it has a 
has something to it. Yes. It's, it's really not, nice. It's not hyper polished. Yeah, but it's very, very. It feels very, very real yep. and gritty, yep. and I really think that's really great. Um, now that so that's that's step one. Yes, I think you know we will probably you know again if I had my PDF we could go yes. and we could show more you know the things, um, but you know it, it is what it is. Uh, needless to say, the art's really good. Yes, but I don't think you can't buy this book right now as a hardback. Not is yet. Right? Pre-order. Pre-order. Yep. Because all that's out right now is the starter set. Which is amazing. Which <laughs> is incredible. Yes. The value in this set. Crushing it. Crush. I couldn't yeah. believe. Now, great. It's not. They are soft. That's right. That's right. You came over and actually saw the whole I, I set. I saw the box set. <laughs> yeah. Soft cover books. Yep. You know, so it's not like you're getting, you know. You like get, when you get the free league yeah. box. Let's, let's be clear. When oh, you get the, a. When you get the for free Forbidden league, Lands sorry, book forbidden, is really good, too. When you get the Forbidden Lands box. box, it's got hardback. Faux leather. Very pretty box, too. Very pretty box. Maps and everything. But Dragon Bane not only comes with these great books. Yep. It comes with the rules and like a a very pretty sturdy adventure. Right. But it also comes with maps. Yep. It comes with tokens, little character stands. For for a bunch of different types of heroes and most of the monsters in the bestiary in the back of the rules. Yeah. Uh it comes with dice. Yep. It comes with like treasure cards, the initiative cards. Um I think there's something else, uh, like uh, conditions cards, I believe, as well. I mean, it's just it's just loaded. Um, basically, popping open the box, you have everything you need to play. When that, we we had everything we need with the pre gen character sheets yeah, and everything, and not just like your typical you know one or two session. Oh yeah, uh, a pre you know little beginner box adventure. It's basically it, take the concept yep. of the beginner box adventure from you know from D and D or from Pathfinder two, right? But now make it a beginner box campaign. Yep. It comes with a beautiful map, a whole kind of really cool storyline, and it's done in a very free league style, which is to say kind of an old school style, where it's more like there's a bunch of cool That's right. uh, uh, creepy sites. It's very location-based. When I when I was talking to someone else about this, I was like, I feel like Derek likes because you can go out to this site and explore, or this site and explore. You you don't you get to choose. Right. You know, I guess you as a GM get to decide what rumors you tell the players, but in general, uh, you know, it's... There's like 12 different rumors. So you, you start off with like, again, I mean, I'll just talk about this and how this adventure specifically works. You start off with like a quick combat, get your feet wet. You go into town, get yourself familiar with the NPCs, and then you get rumors. And so the idea is that you could, interestingly, you can decide for them to go to every single rumor on this page and stretch this campaign out. Right. Or you could kind of like give the things that need to be done at the certain locations and make this a really quick three or four shot. Right. You can decide yeah, as the GM of, or your players can feel it out. A lot of flexibility yes. there. Mm-hmm. And, and and again, you could definitely just, you know, run it, go to one of these little adventure sites yep. in one session, one and done, have a fun little experience. Oh, we raided the, yep. this ancient tomb of a of an ancient king or an ancient tribal chief. And there, you know, whatever. We, we had this really cool little moment. Yep. But it's also part of a, like a little, well, basically a mini campaign. It is a mini campaign. And you could easily, I could see you running you know, 10, 12, 15 sessions. Yeah, it just depends. It. I I I would think 10 is probably the, the right number. Okay. And then a little bit less if your group's like, okay, I wish we could like speed it up. You're like, okay, well, the stuff you need is at the next place. Right. You know what I mean? Like really easily. Um yeah. So Ben says it has that Eldritch faded vintage photo look going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good term. Yeah, it, it, it's got it, that I, Eldritch. It, yeah. It definitely. It's it's a really cool style. Yeah. And it, it stood out to me. You know, it's definitely um, something different that I'm not used to seeing. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's it stood out to me between your really hyper polished very, you know, like your your role for combat stuff, your um, uh, Matt Colville stuff, right? Yeah. Really, really sharp, really, really. And then also like your kind of more sketchy black and white. Yeah, it, they, it's, they it's also have just like their own. And I, maybe this is and this is just me being me yeah. like more of a um, maybe this is Swedish, like the way that they interpret things <laughs> like their goblins and their giants have like a real old school, like storybook look to them. There's, a, there's always sort of that yeah. sort of. This, this the, Nordic the, lore. The Nordic, yeah. the Nordic games have sort of that. I like it, that, though. That kind of like Hans, you know, that kind of like Hans Christian Andersen kind of like old school yeah, like Grimm, when, Grimm's fairy tale. Yeah, when I, when I, you know, when I see troll minis and stuff, I'm thinking of Pathfinder 1. Then I got this like hook nose troll mini, right. you know, that I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's that's not something I'm used to seeing, but I kind of feel it. Like, I kind of feel the idea here. Yeah, <laughs> it, again, I think the art in the book yep. is incredible. But yes, I mean, this, this box set... Um, it was just incredible. And, you know, Crucible uh, Crucible Gaming Group says the box has literally everything you need to play. Yep. Rules, campaign, map, yep. dice, standees, little yep. models. Uh, or, which are uh, also the same art style, which is just beautiful. Yep. Pre-gen characters. <laughs> yep. Uh, grid. 
and yep. it's 50 bucks or something. Oh, I thought it was less than that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was less than that. Um, someone could someone could double check, but I, I could have swore I thought it was roughly the same price as the Forbidden Land set. And you, I think you technically got more in this. Like you were ready to go out the box. Forbidden Land's like, obviously has a lot of reading. But. Yeah. Um, oh, GM Scott, they're there coming in. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, what do we got? What is Jim Scott? Says, so glad you're finally taking a deeper look at DB. I hope you love it as much as I do for its purpose. Can't stay running my first session of uh, VSD tonight. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, GM Scott. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a game that we got turned on to because of Scott. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I would say 100%. In fact, even going so far as when we were sitting down to play it, you said, before we begin, here are Scott's notes. Scott <laughs> did a really nice recap in our in our Patreon, and he um, he kind of gave like a bullet points of like, okay, D20 how is this system just different in D20? And he just kind of went down the list. And I, and I read that as my bullet points before the game session. And um, I feel like it encapsulated it. I feel like I gave that to you in 10 minutes, and you were like, yep, I kind of know how to play. Yep. <laughs> so let's get into it a little bit here. Uh, $50 the- on the Free League website, and I'm pretty sure it's cheaper on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's get into it a little bit here. But you here- should get that hardback, and I just ordered the hardback bestiary on pre-order. So I'm pretty, oh. yeah. Big, I, I went look at deep. Bob. I went deep. Look at Bob I spending deep. money. Like on role playing games, Bob. Here's the thing: they gave me the PDF right away, and then I got the um, uh-huh. the uh, the hardcover to come. But, uh, all right, you know, they got me. They got me good. They got you good. <laughs> um, all right, so we got the character sheet here pulled. That's up. right. I'm gonna pull it up on my laptop too, just so I can actually mm-hmm. see it. Um, and uh, so let's kind of dig into this a little bit because um, there's a couple of things here that, quite frankly are actually pretty old school, okay? So the first thing is, you'll notice across the top, you have your six ability scores. Yep. They are strength, constitution, agility, uh, intelligence, intellect, uh, willpower, and charisma. Yep. I mean, so this is very, it's very, very similar, similar to d and Not where like MCDM like just decided to change them all. Yeah, some of these are exactly the same. Yeah, correct. And you'll also see that more or less, the ability scores... Uh, follow roughly the same sort of progression that you would expect to see in a typical D and D game. Mm-hmm. You know, a low score might be eight, a higher score might be sixteen or eighteen. Right now, the the of course, obviously, the game's origins, um, you know, come from you know probably the baseline of D and D, right? Which is a D twenty based game. Yep. And this game is no different. However, the one thing that you'll notice is that there are no ability modifiers or anything like that tied to any of these ability scores, any of these six ability scores. And that's because the primary, the mechanic of the game is basically the old ability check rule from Dungeons and Dragons. Now, a lot of people, you know, are newer, newer to the games. Right, they they have always played a version of D and D where you know an eighteen strength yep. gives you a plus four, right? Yep. And then you're gonna roll a D twenty, you're gonna add four, and then you have to beat some DC, Correct. right? Some some difficulty class, Correct. Number, some right? Check some check. That is not the way that D and D worked before third edition D and D. Gotcha. In second edition D&D and in first edition D&D, if you wanted to do an ability check, like your GM might say, make a strength check, Mm -hmm. you would roll a D20 and compare it to your strength score. And if it was equal to or under your strength score, you succeeded. Because you were stronger than what you were doing. Right. So basically, you know, you're rolling a D20. Mm -hmm. So if your strength's 18, then you're going to succeed on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 8. But if your strength was 10 or your strength was 9... You would roughly 50 50. You roughly 50 50. Now, of course, I should now point- they, they actually have in here like they, they talk about, um, and you could you could decide how you want to do this, but they say roll 46 for your attribute scores and then you know take uh, um, get rid of the worst one. You're saying for generating them for generating your, your abilities yeah. modifiers, yeah. So it's, it's ability it's, scores, sorry. It's, I think your it's attributes. Yeah, your attributes is what they call them. But yes, it's it's a random creation. Yep. Um, and, you know, so your characters are gonna be have a little bit more of that randomness to it. But yep. I, in terms of the the core mechanic, let's just kind of break that down. Okay. Okay. Because I grew up playing second edition D and D, so ability checks are all I knew. Right. Make a wisdom check, because there was no skill system, there was no DC system. Yeah. It was just. Make a skill check. Yeah, or make you, a, a ability if you were skill. doing something that required strength, it was 
strength as the big right. big there, strength. There was no <laughs> reflex save. Correct. Right. So for example, let's say you and I were playing D and D. It's you know circa 1995. Okay, and I describe that the uh, you know the sword of the Dales is about to fall over the edge of the cliff, and you go, I go diving for it to yeah. catch it, and I say, okay, make a dexterity check. You're gonna roll a d20. You're going to look at the number that comes on it. You're going to compare it to your dexterity score. And if it's lower than that or equal to it, you've grabbed it. If you roll higher, you fail. Yep. Okay. So this is really, really fast. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> it's so fast. It's so fast. And, and and actually, it's 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 there's because of the way the ability score is, there's, I mean, it's technically math, but there's like no math. Like, Correct. I'm pretty sure my five-year-old son, yes. who has played D&D, yes. when I tell him roll against his big number yes it's lower you you succeed well, he would know th- so let's let's break this down okay a standard procedure in a d20 game well, whether you're rolling d20 modifier the gm says make a check yep. and you say okay and then you go okay what you know um do i have a skill yep what about what attribute is it so okay i've got a plus three strength and my skip my proficiency bonus is plus three so i'm adding those together i have a plus six now i'm going to roll a d20 then I'm going to add six to that. Then I generate a number. Then I'm going to tell that number to the GM. Then, because I'm an idiot, I probably said what was on my die roll, not what my actual total Always. was. Always. Then the GM gets really upset at me because I yelled out 18, and I think, oh, you failed. But no, you actually got a 24. You just rolled an 18. I don't know why you're telling me 18. I don't care that you rolled an 18. Look, I got to process it. So I got to okay. tell you the dice, tell myself the dice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, G- Gabe says, what the hell is this camera angle? So Gabe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Mr. Smith isn't here today. Um, and as a result, I moved our sort of wide shot so that it's just me and Bob. So that way, otherwise, normally you would have just this big empty spot of the studio. So that that's what this shot is. Um, so uh, you, you roll the d20. You're adding the number. You say the number, and then the GM goes, okay, now I have to compare against the DC. Yes. And now I have to tell you, the player, did you succeed or not? Correct. So there, now it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on there, but it's like it's like nine or ten operations. Mm-hmm. It all takes time at the, at the, at the table. And more importantly, uh, it involves that sort of really, you know, math. You're adding yeah. numbers. And well, also, and, and it requires... The, the GM first is telling about the check and the player doing a lot of the math and then going back to the GM right. for the like ex- the added or subtraction of the sure. math. Sure, and it doesn't seem like it's a lot, and it's not, but the fact of the it matter is up. it does add up. But there's a couple of really cool advantages to this style of uh, this style of system, which is, number one, if the GM says make a strength check, you look at your strength score. That's it. And you just roll it. That's right. Now, yes, that is math, but... I like to make a distinction between math and just comparing. Yeah, I was going to say, it is technically math. It is technically math. But my math. son can do it. <laughs> but like, the, there's a big dip. There's also a big difference between seeing a number mm-hmm. and comparing it to another number versus having an imaginary number, yep. right? So, for example, I'm like, because that's what a DC is, right? You're comparing it. Did I get equal to or higher than the DC? So I say the DC is 24, right? Yep. And you roll a 16, Technically, you're comparing the 16 plus your modifier to the DC 24, yep. Did I get but it? you can't see the 20. The, whatever you rolled, let's say you got a plus 10 modifier, so you have a plus 20, you have a 26. That 26 is virtual. That's right. It's up here. Whereas this is like, look to number, number on die, number on sheet. Is other number smaller? That's it. Like yeah, it's, it's fast. It's very, very fast. And very easy. Now, there's a downside to this, which I don't mind, which is... An, they kind of address this a little bit, but it's it's a pretty heavy-handed approach, which is this, rightfully so. Derek, we're playing we're playing AD and D Second Edition, nineteen ninety five, and you say, Derek, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna try to lift up the the massive log so that we can get out. And I go, cool, make a strength check, okay. And then like an hour later, you're like, Derek, I'm gonna try to lift up the massive boulder that is blocking our way, and I go. Cool, make a strength check. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. Right? Now, for me and for a lot of you who've been playing years of Power by the Apocalypse, this doesn't feel that unusual because in Power by the Apocalypse, everything is the same DC, right? That's right. If you get a seven or higher, you succeed. But with the ability modifiers, there it can it can bother some people because you're not like able to reflect 
this is more difficult. This is more difficult. Now, some people started doing that in AD and D, but it basically lost the point of it because you'd yeah. say, you'd say, okay, make a strength check, but for purposes of this strength check, your strength is five points lower because it's really it's, it's, it's harder. It's really heavy. Yeah, yeah. And so at that point, you're like, and this is that that. More people were doing that, which is kind of what led to third edition. Now, in this game, uh, you, it's just it's just roll roll equal to or under. The, the the big change that comes in there is boon or bane, right? So basically, advantage disadvantage. It is advantage. that's really where you go. Ooh, that's that's heavier. Okay, you have bane, right? You could you could do that as a GM, or right. something might give you that. Now, I will say this is a very heavy handed approach Correct. because anybody who's played fifth edition knows that. Advantage or disadvantage, which this game calls boons and banes. Mm -hmm. In fact, this game is even more extreme because you can stack oh, boons yeah. and banes. Oh, yeah. So, number one, if you have three banes and one boon, it's not like, oh, they cancel nope. like they do in 5th edition. No, no, no. It's like three plus Min one, you have yeah. two boons yep. or two banes. Yep. Secondly, it, it is the same. You're rolling the 2d20, and you're taking the high or you're taking the low if it's a bane so, or a, a boon. Yep. You want to roll up. Trust me, the boon and bane. The only, I don't like that they're both bees, but I get it. Right. Because I, I mix them up all the time, but I I know what I'm saying right. sometimes. <laughs> now, the, the net net of this is if you ever have double banes or double boons, like y your odds of succeeding are, are really, really bad or really, really good. Exactly. You, you know, it's almost to the point of being like kind of success. Oh, yeah. You know? Now, I will also say that the scale of this is very different. For example, if your character has a stat of 16 or 17 or 18, your character, oh, you know, is, is like 90% likely oh, to pass like a the master. Test. <laughs> but even if you have a bane and you're going to be rolling 2d20 and taping the worst one, you still have like a 65, 70% <laughs> chance of You're still really strong you're or really, really agile, agile but or something. If your stat is lower, you know, an eight or a nine or a 10, so you're already at 50 50. You get a bane, and oh. now you're rolling two d twenty. Take the worst one. You, your your cut your chance of succeeding oh, yeah. cuts cut in half, and now you're down to twenty five percent. It's pretty bad. Yeah. So there's kind of a weird like there's basically it's a situation where if your character is uh, really good at something, they can they can eat a few banes. But once you kind of start to get you know uh, bad a little bad on it, it it's not yeah. good. It yeah, this apart. is also a fun system if you're really bad at dice rolling in your D&D &D <laughs> games. Uh, a lot of people joke like, oh, I never roll good. I never roll high enough. Well, you know, that's, this is the perfect game for you. Like rolling rolling low is... There's no it's, such it's, thing as locks. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. it's just fun because it, it was like um, I mean, right. last night's system. I think uh, one of our players had like uh, six or seven um, uh, dragons, which was a nat one. Right. Which sounds awful, except for this game, which is amazing. Right. You know, so, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so it, 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 it's it's inter it's interesting, but it's it's so apparent, and and I think it's so it, like it, it. There's that we always talk about feel, mm -hmm. like you, the player feels it right away when I'm like, uh, make a spot hidden check, and they're like, oh, my spot hidden's like six. They're like, there's no. Adding modifiers that go, I just know that I have to roll under a six or under. They yep. just know they have to do that. And yep. if they don't, they can do the math like so fast. Well, in their it's not even percent. math. They look yeah. at the number on their character yeah. sheet and they see what it is. So because yeah. because we've been talking about ability scores, but honestly, uh, everything in the game works in this. Correct. Including your skills, which is what you're going to be rolling most of the time. Yes. And your skills are right there in the middle of your sheet mm -hmm. and they work on the same way. They're they're from you know, from low to high, you have some skills that you're better in. You need to roll equal to or under it. Mm -hmm. um, you have your weapon skills, which are, you know, your swords and bows and maces. And then you have your more generic skills that might look not out of place from a modern D20 game, yeah, right? They have Acrobatics a bit... and crafting and... Yeah, they have like awareness, a spot hidden. They have different words, myths and lore, I think, or myth, myths and legend is kind of like your yep. lore checks. So, yeah, so you have to roll equal to or under the roll game. So in this game, a 20... Is Real, bad news. That's, that's a demon. That's a that's kind of a critical failure. Yeah. And a nat one is actually good. Yes. Now yes. there is something fun we'll talk about probably a little bit later, which is how you quote unquote level up. Right. Uh, where is sometimes rolling a demon isn't that bad. Right. Because it still allows you a chance to level up that ability. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that. Yep. Um. But basically, the long the short of it is, um, you know, going back to what Bob was saying, one of the things that I have heard from a lot of people is uh and and I didn't really truly appreciate it until we really went into it which was they really liked in Call of Cthulhu Call of Cthulhu uses more specifically we're talking about the the basic role playing um so Call of Cthulhu uses this other systems use it that came from Chaosium it's that D100 system mm -hmm. uh against the dark master yep uses this 
you look at that and you go, oh, my character has a 70% chance at shooting handguns. As a human being, you intuitively understand even more so than I would say with the D20. Mm -hmm. Like you said, with a D20, you see a six, you know, I need a six or less. Yep. Now, you don't necessarily, you know, you might not have the, the wherewithal to go, that's a 30% chance of success, but you get a good roughly feel of it. But when Call of Cthulhu, where it's literally just a percentage. Yeah, that's really easy. It's really, you can just look at it and say, I know that my number that's on my sheet is how my percent chance of succeeding. If it's a 75, I have a 75% chance. Yeah. So I think that you're right about game feel. It just feels very. Um, the players got it right away. Like the, we jumped in. And, and, that, and that's important. Yeah, yeah. They read it. I think they all read the rules yesterday before we played. Um, and you read it, and just like I read, you're kind of like, oh, no, no, it sounds a little, sounds a little weird or whatnot. And, and then you start playing, you go, oh, this is just straight intuitive. Like it's very easy to pick up on. You just, the feel is. They knew right away. Like I don't know if I should be doing the spot hidden. I, I think the awareness here. I'm not really aware. I don't. I get it. Like I'm not really aware. I can easily see and feel that when I roll this, I mean, they're going to get really lucky or not. Like you know, what I mean, like yeah. the, you know, when someone rolls like a three and their skill check was like a a five they're like wow yeah. like i really got lucky there <laughs> and i know a lot of people who've played a lot more fifth edition than me mm -hmm. uh constantly gripe about advantage or disadvantage oh but i love it I, now it's a very heavy-handed correct approach it's basically like the doubler yeah i mean double it, it, up almost. <laughs> it, it is a very heavy-handed approach but i personally uh it has a feel too it has a feel well yeah. here's the difference you know there's a there's a great saying in pathfinder 2 plus one's a lot it doesn't feel like it though. It it yeah, the math is tight there. The math is really tight. So like you you might bust your ass. You know, the cleric casts their spell, bless. Yes. The bard casts inspire courage. What does that give me? Plus one. Yep. And the problem with that, we kind of talked about this the other day. Uh, I don't remember what stream we were talking about on this on. But the fact of the matter is if somebody gives you a plus one bonus, if you roll and you roll a six or seven. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. Because you would have missed anyways. Or if you roll like an 18 or 19, you hit and you would yeah. have hit anyways. So it, it kind of feels like even though the bonus was there, it didn't really matter. It's one of those Happens things where, a lot. like, I appreciate the gradation that it gives you. It gives you a lot of fine control. Oh, well, you're really well rested, so I'm going to give you a plus one. But you're also going through some emotional difficulty with your mother. I'm going to give you a minus two. And then I'm going to give you another plus two because, of, like, you can do all these little tiny little fiddly things. But at the end of the day... You know, especially a role-playing game where, you know, I'm trying to keep it fast and paced and fun. Like, I want the modifiers to be big, big and, sledgehammer. But also quick. And just quick. Yeah. And, and, and intuitively, grab two dice. <laughs> grab two dice. Yep. And, that's, and I think people, they just get it. Yeah. And, I, and Aaron and I have talked about this before where uh, the feel of advantage and disadvantage oh, yeah. is such a big deal. Because when you roll with advantage... You don't actually know which one would have been your D20 and which one would have been the advantage die. So when you see that that one number comes up crap, but the other number comes up high, you don't feel like they wasted the good surprise on you. Yeah. You go, awesome. You know, I crushed it's, it. It's, I mean, just adding a dice to any roll feels yeah. great. And it's brutal <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you roll with disadvantage or Bane and you see that perfect number, that yep. nat one, that two, yep. but you can't take it. You got to take the crap one. Yep. You know, and so that's... Um, that's really nice. Yeah, no, it's a great feel. Yeah, it's a great feel. So um, I, I personally think that this system is simple, easy, intuitive. And again, it worked for D&D &D for the better part of 20 years. So I don't see why it wouldn't work here. Yep. Um, and I was kind of, you know, pleasantly, I was pleasantly surprised to find how much, uh, how, how much I enjoyed playing with it. Yeah. You know, because, again, I grew up playing that kind of system. So to see it and be like, oh, you know, I remember when 3rd Edition came out, I was like, oh, yes, that old system sucks because how could I distinguish between a heavy door and a very heavy <laughs> door? And, like, you know, like, here's the thing. You're absolutely right, like, to the point of a bane. You might say, dude, this is a boulder. I'm talking about, like, Brian Shaw oh, boulder. Oh, Brian Shaw. Okay. I'm, you're going to have to roll with a bane. Yeah. And everyone goes, okay, I get it. But then when you're talking about the difference between like, well, that's a steel reinforced oak door, but that one's made of maple, but it has a bronze re – like, dude, it's just a check. Make the check. Yeah. I don't care. There's not enough of a difference between these doors. It's, it's a great way to paint your world in big colors. Easy, normal, hard. It, what I did yesterday in my game was uh, the one guy rolled a, a, a dragon, uh, Nat 1, and su succeeded, and he was terrible at – spot hidden he, i think he was a five and so he rolled a one he's like oh my gosh like first i succeeded but then i also kind of crit succeeded and so i was just like i just looked at him and i said how come how come you succeeded like 
give me, like that that roll took one second. There was no math. You we succeeded. Here's your chance to give me your FBT. Right. You are, know? Are, are you are you implying that simple games give more freedom and mental yes. processing for people to describe things yes. and role play, Bob? Yes, he he and he, he did great. He was the he played the mallard duck the 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 knight that you played, and he Pretender. was like he was like, uh, yeah, I. He's like, I was a knight, and uh, basically, you know, during my time, I would have I would have I think I would have hid there as well. You know, that's where I would hide. So I look that way, and then I spotted that goblin that was hiding, and I was like. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. And, yeah. But it was, I don't know. You know me when I play Pathfinder 2. Yes. I get a little broken when I'm trying to do the GMing. And this, I was just like, uh, roll your spot hidden. And he goes, I succeeded. I'm like, okay, that was great. <laughs> right. Like, that, that's it was so, it's so easy it's on my It's a very head. simple transaction. Yeah, so then I can actually start to actually role play. Yeah. And now we can get into this system and go, okay, let's have some fun creating right. who we are. I want to feel like who you are as this mallard duck and, right. and whatnot. <laughs> and that it's hard to do that when I'm like, well, let me let me check with the rules really quick. And yeah, yeah. did that affect anything else? Again, I'm sort of griping, but <laughs> so that kind of brings us into another thing that I want to talk about. Um, which is so we've been talking about dice rolls. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I think that this is this is this again has a, a very it's very quick, it's very easy, it lacks resolution in the sense that it's you know it's there's not a lot of fine detail Correct. you know that you can't say well the dc is one higher or two no it's like you either boon or bane yeah it's big big changes yep so that's fine for this level of game yep but the other thing that's really cool about this game and this gets back to input randomness output randomness we've talked about this before about player agency we've talked about this in the form of um uh um, um players having more control over the stakes of their game and ultimately, what you know to, to a certain extent, what I think is at the heart of D and D, which is pushing your luck. And you know, <laughs> it's it's it, it's got a weird feel. This push your luck, or in this game, push the roll. It's called push the roll, but yeah, I mean, but it's, it, that's what it is. Push your luck. Yeah, they're called push or push. It's, it's interesting. Well, a lot of board games have you. I mean, a lot of games have people used. just don't like to fail, and and they have that like almost like that second chance. Yep. it's I but, mean, they, but they have the choice. And correct. We'll, we'll talk about it. No, You'll that, get into okay, it. But yeah, this is what it, this is what it's talking it's great. about. So it has a good feel. For those to of it. you who don't know, <laughs> what pushing a roll technically means. that's an optional rule in here. Is it? I could have swore that was the core rule because okay. we played with it, and yeah. I thought that's what it was. And then uh, my players were like, "Are we playing with that?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, oh, "I thought you said we were playing with the basic core rules." I go, "Oh, I thought that was the core rule because it oh. just it's so it makes so much sense. It's very easy. Yeah. That's I, actually I, an optional I, rule. I suggest you play with it. Yeah, <laughs> I would suggest that you play yes. with it too, um, because. You know, I've said this before about D&D &D and games like Legend of the Five Rings, which you've had an opportunity to oh, play. Oh, yeah, great game. So both D&D &D and Legend of the Five Rings use dice. Mm -hmm. But in D&D, &D, you do, or Pathfinder, you do all the stuff you can do. You make all the decisions that you can make. And then when you're done, you, you put it into the random number generator and yep. you find out what happens. Your ability to make decisions is kind of over. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons I like Legend of the Five Rings so much is because you sort of make a, you make a somewhat of a decision. Then you roll dice. Then you look at the dice, you make more and you make more decisions. I like that. Which means that you, as a player, get to make choices after the randomness. Which I really like. <laughs> and that makes you feel very much in control. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is true for push mechanics. Now, uh, Call of Cthulhu and other Chaosium games use push mechanics. This game uses push mechanics. A lot of free league games use push mechanics. Forbidden Lands uses push mechanics. Yep. And all push mechanics mean is it's just like, you know, pushing your luck in a, a casino. You fail, double or nothing. Yep. Basically, is what it comes down to. Are you get a second bite at the apple? And now different games handle this differently, but the the net net of it usually is you have to pay a price. That's right. There's or, a cost. <laughs> or uh, you, you know, the consequences, if you fail again, become much more, much yep. worse. So if you're playing Forbidden Lands, which is a year zero engine game, if you push a roll, suddenly any ones that you've rolled can damage your character. Right, you, right. you pushed yourself too far. You, you've taxed yourself mentally. If you're playing Call of Cthulhu and you choose to push the roll and you fail, the consequences become disastrous. So this is a way for you as a character to sort of interject. Now, to be completely honest... Hero points or inspiration. Well, no, inspiration happens before. So hero mm -hmm. points, hero points from more. Pathfinder 2 give you the same thing yep. because you can roll a die, say, I don't like that die roll. I'm going to roll again. It's basically pushing. Yep. The difference is Pathfinder 2 relies on that meta currency that, you know, fate does the same thing. You can spend a fate point in fate to get a reroll. 
But when a game relies on a meta currency, that meta currency is usually given out by the game master. And, you know, maybe at some, you know. Yeah, hoping uh, that they give them out. <laughs> yeah, they're, I mean, yeah, they're, you're, you're kind of at the GM's discretion. I don't know how many games I've seen where, like, like it's, been, for, it's been an hour. Yeah, I forgot to hand out hero yeah, points. Could you, could you hand me out hero points? Yes. I'm like, shoot. <laughs> so, which is fine, which is great. But the, the net net of it is you don't feel, I think, as in control. And there's this idea of, like, I want to do, I want to re-roll, but then I'm giving up yeah. this resource. Whereas with push, you're like, I could just get everything I've ever wanted. Yeah. You know, and it, it, there's it, this really, nice, really won't, it really won't cost me anything. There's this really nice feel too, where you're like, when, we, when you bone your roll, right? You did, like you said, you did everything you wanted and you just, just bad luck. And you're like, I did it right. And I kind of got screwed. Um, and you go, I want another crack, like you said, at the apple. But then there's also the counter, which is kind of interesting. Um, where like the odds were not in your favor. And this is when you get the Hail Mary point. You're like, the odds were in my favor. I was trying to roll five or under. And I rolled a 10. Do I want to push my luck? I and mean, then this now we're talking like really like yeah. do you this is this is dire right well, now. Well, what, what's <laughs> I'm gonna take a condition yeah. and I'm probably gonna fail again. But you get that choice. Yeah. And that's so nice. Right. Not just the double or nothing, which well, you're probably gonna succeed, but the ones that are like a really tight, like the on edge decision right. is really well, nice. Well, so what the push mechanic does is it does two things. One, it Pro, uh, provides a uh, special, oh, not specialty, but um, it provides a certain amount of protection yeah. to the highly skilled character. I have a 17 in this. I should succeed. I, I should succeed. I, oh, I rolled an 18 or 19. Oh, I push. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, I'm angry. I'm pissed off that I even yep. have, I, I'm bothered that I have to do this roll again. That way you have this sort of niche protection. It sort of protects your ability to be a kind of a badass. On the other hand, like you said, it also gives characters who are bad at something yes. that double Hail, hail Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they like to gamble. And, and it's a gamble. You know, it's a gamble. There's also this, um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, and maybe it's just me, but when you when you fail twice, you kind of just accept it. <laughs> That's a great point. I don't know why. I don't know what it no, is. It, You're like, okay, I, I deserved it. Yeah. I obviously don't know what I'm yeah, doing. Obviously, <laughs> we, we have clearly established at this point that it is not meant to be. Yeah. Right? It, it, but it, it, it takes that, like, it's a, it's that true. angry attitude away where you're like, oh, I just got screwed. You're like, no, I pushed him. Like, I got screwed again. You're like, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. It, right. It's weird. It takes it takes it back. Enough. I mean, Maybe you guys feel the same way, but it's just really strange. You know, we talk a lot on this channel about how RPGs are more than just mechanics, right? It is it is about the psychology mm -hmm. of what is happening at play. How does something feel, you know? So, but let, let's get back into the cost. Because, again, I think this is where the game That's becomes right. really, really interesting. Because um, inspiration and hero points are a meta currency that exists entirely outside of the game and don't have any impact on the game. Meaning, they're they're just there to be able to like change how your character re-rolls or not. In this game, in order to push a roll after you fail, you have to, well, to quote to quote Powered by the Apocalypse, to do it, you have to do it. Yes. You can't just push. Yep. You have to, one, describe what it is that is driving your character yeah, to why? succeed. <laughs> and then two tied into that reasoning, you have to mark one of the six conditions. Yep. Is that correct? Now, you'll see these. If at you, the, and if all six are already marked, yes. you can't push. You cannot push. Correct. So if we take a look at the Actually, top. I think you, yeah, I think you cannot push. You have to, you may no longer push your roles. In addition to their effects, conditions provide inspiration for role playing. Yep. Yeah. So if we take a look at the top of the character sheet, there are six conditions, one associated with each of the six abilities. So strengths. Condition is exhausted. Constitution is sickly. Agility, dazed. Uh, intellect or intelligence, angry. Willpower, scared. And charisma, disheartened. Yep. So here's the cool thing about it. You can use any of these conditions. You can mark any of these conditions as long as you make a good faith effort to describe, you know, why you going the extra mile for this push would lead you into that condition. Yep. Right? And your GM has the right to say no. And your GM could say that's a shit reason. Yep. Uh, I'm Which last say night I goals in the chat. He was he was trying for one. I was like, I don't think so. Right. That's called and, yeah. Well, he kept trying, and eventually he can he convinced me. Okay. But he, but, he, he had to dig real deep into yeah, the RPG yeah, and <laughs> you, 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 don't be don't be afraid to to shut down a player who's reaching. You know. Oh yeah. You know, who's well, I stopped him right away. I was yeah. like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Because the the thing about these conditions are these conditions are nasty. Well, correct. When you mark a condition, now you have bane to all skills from that uh, strength. Let's right. say you, you took exhausted any of your skills that are strength based, bane. Right. right. Which Remember, could... talk, swingy, 
Bane bad. Like now you're rolling disadvantage. That's huge. Right. It, it is absolutely huge. But here's the thing that's really, really cool about it. This is the I've seen the same thing happen again and again in games like Legend of the Five Rings, in games like Avatar Legends, in games like Monster Hearts, in games like all these things. When you give people this mechanic that is both prescriptive and descriptive. Prescriptive meaning this is going to tell you mechanically what happens. Correct. But it's not just some meaningless mechanic, all right? It has flavor to it. And so as a character and the fact that you have to describe it, me making an attack roll, failing, and then attacking again with a push, getting to re-roll. I shouldn't say attack again. I should re-roll. And me marking angry as the condition versus me marking dazed as the condition. Yeah, they feel they, so they feel different, so different. And it creates it's not a, it's not like we're not doing critical role here, but it creates a different feeling at the table. And and honestly, when you're in an intense combat, we we don't I don't want time for you know Tolstoy's novel. I want a quick like you know. Um, uh, you know, I swing, it bounces off of his shield. My, I, you know, I grip my teeth, I roar in rage, I keep smashing. There's no technique. I'm just bashing, bashing, bashing. I'm angry. I'm pushing. That's right. And you're like, yep, cool, roll. And that's it. It was just like a quick one or two second little vignette. Yep. Uh, and now suddenly, though, that attack roll. Doesn't it feel so much more alive in your mind? Yes. Well, that the, what you were saying earlier, just about the the because it kind of gives you that little hint, like you're exhausted. And it, you start to go, okay, maybe I am exhausted here. Why am I exhausted? Let me explain to you the GM why. And everyone at the table goes, totally, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Everyone at the table kind of agrees. I can see why you're angry. I can see why you're exhausted. I can see why you're uh, sickly in this condition. And so now we talked about, like, sometimes when you play in these VTTs or the maps, you kind of remove yourself from the, from the imagination. But that helps everyone on the table starts to get tied together more and it, and it and it really does bring it brings the the world to life a little more when you can explain that you're exhausted and this is why i can start to see oh, you took a couple swings and you didn't get it that's why you're starting to get exhausted yeah. here or something so yeah so i i think a really important question got asked by keith keith mcgrath he said okay. what if you have shy players and that's a great question mm -hmm. and the answer is they don't push a lot okay. <laughs> they don't no, no. the answer is you use this as a way to bring them out of their shyness. You say, they're like, I want to push. And then you say, and you go, okay, which condition are you going to mark? And they go, angry. And you go, great. Just real quick. Like, maybe the first time, the first couple of times that you do it, that's it. You just let them have it. But like maybe the second or third time that they do it, you go, okay, cool. Why did that make you angry? And they go, I don't know. I guess I just really don't like missing. Okay. Cool. That's it. Like, <laughs> or like, you can throw some hints in there too. Right. Like, oh, maybe maybe your player is doing X, Y, and Z, and they you'll start to see them kind of, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. And you're like, good, good. When everyone sort of gets it, correct. You know I mean? it, it, it can be a communal thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's it's. <laughs> Gabe says, "Damn, it's like therapy." I have done it. I can't. I think I've done a stream before specifically where it's kind of like <laughs> RPGs are a form of therapy. I mean, role playing games are you know a role playing right. is, is a form of therapy. Um, and so absolutely like. Be be very clear about this here. Uh, role playing is not, you know, talking in a very bad fake Scottish accent, which is like that's whatever. funny you just said that because that's all Gull Decat did last night. <laughs> Scottish accent the whole night. I don't know what happened, but that this, this is <laughs> whether it's critical role or people at home for some odd reason talking like this. A, the that's, whole night, Gull. That's, that's that. That'll be the day, lad. Is somehow what he everyone knows. associates with role play. Um, <laughs> Role playing is <laughs> he 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 nailed it though. Okay, well look, I'm not trying to say that it's not anything, but it's just what it is. Um, look, but, he, he was he was um, Bastan the Bl Bastan Bloodjaw the Wolf. So he decided he came up from the mountains and from Scotland. Okay, <laughs> Gull says that's twice he's chirped me in. I know. Minutes. Okay, look look this this is great. The whole night he because he's Bastan. He kept thinking he was also Guston, okay, but the wolf version. Wait, so, Guston from Beauty and the Beast. Oh yeah, so he would just make puns the whole time about just just Beauty and the Beast. Like he 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 put the perfume on because the dang wolf had perfume oh, the on wolf him, had perfume. and he's like, I'm I'm Beauty and the Beast. Like, and he was we we showed up to the tavern, and he was like, I need five dozen eggs because they make me get strong. And, right, right. And he would it was all in the sky. It was I mean it was. 
it was beautiful. It was yeah, great. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, you know, uh, Crucible Gaming Group uh, says role playing for me, and I, I would completely agree with you. We've said this many times on this stream or on this channel. Role playing for me is making decisions that your character would make. Uh, that is absolutely correct. That's right. You know, because when you play a what is what is the key distinction between a role playing game and a not a role playing game? For me, when I'm playing Magic the Gathering, or I'm playing Power Grid, or I'm playing whatever. The, the person making decisions is Derek, mm -hmm. and I am making the decisions that are going to let me win. That's usually a board game, yeah. Yeah, a board game, Yep. right? I'm not worried about, like, the flavor or theme of what my imaginary, I guess, magnate of my power grid, yeah. right? I'm looking at the power grid game board, and I'm going, which city can I connect to that is going to give me the most points? Yep. I'm just trying to win. That's usually, that's correct. Now, role-playing doesn't necessarily mean that you're making bad decisions, a lot of people make that mistake. Oh, if I'm if you're making good decisions, you're not role playing. No, it just means that now. And there's different ways to get this. We've talked about this before. About if, if you're new to this channel, again, we get some pretty deep into things about before about like actor versus pawn stance versus mm -hmm. director stance versus author stance. Where what motivates it? Like somebody might go, "Hey, I am just going to make a decision that I'm going to make, and it could be a good one, it could be a bad one, but I feel like it's the one that my character would make." Another person could say. Me, the player, really wants to go take this action because that's a really great action and it's going to be really good for us. But I'm not going to just make that decision. I'm going to figure out a way that my character would be motivated to make that decision. Oh, that's I like that. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a that's a little that's a little more advanced, but yeah, yeah. Well, it, it it's just it takes the, a level of yeah. It's the way that player. you can. <laughs> it's the way you can have your cake and eat it too, mm -hmm. right? It's where you you know Aaron does this all the time. Yeah. Right. You've, you've seen oh, all yeah. of it. Yeah. Where Aaron goes, I'm going to do the optimal thing, but I'm also going to explain it through my character in such a way that it makes sense that this is what my character would do. Yep. Um, and some, and for a lot of players too, it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of the two. Sometimes you do the thing that you want to do. And sometimes you go, you know, I, 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 I think my character would do this, even though it's a bad decision. Yeah. You know, well, this one also has a little bit, and we didn't talk about this a lot, but it has uh, like weaknesses. Um, which is kind of like your character's personality a bit. And part of the way you can sort of advance at the end of the session is, did you give in to your weakness? Sure. So it's, or, it's sort of like, did you role play your character correctly? Yeah. And we'll, we'll level you up, which I kind of like. I kind of like that. It's, it's, it's easy and clean. Well, you know, I've said before on this stream before, many, many millions of times, right? Whatever gets rewarded gets repeated. Mm -hmm. um, whatever gets uh, measured gets managed. And so if you create incentives in your game, that give people bonuses for doing X, Y, and Z, then they'll do it. Yeah. I mean, let me, the best example I could think of is I have run numerous Blades in the Dark campaigns. And one of the XP triggers at the end of the session, when you're figuring out how much XP did you get, it basically, one of the questions is like, did you bring up or mention, or did it wasn't important, like your characters, like, uh, you know, heritage, where they came from, their sort of background? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And there's only like four or five questions. So you can only get like That's right. four or five XP. So this is like one XP out of four or five. So when that XP, every session, somebody's going to find a way to be like, ah, this reminds me of growing up <laughs> when I grew up in the Aruvian Isles. Tad forced, but. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, but that's the point. Yeah. The point is, yes, it is forced. It's a game. It's a game of role playing. I tell you, though, the more it gets. I'm going to say it sounds cheesy, but the more it gets brought up, the more I actually remember these dang characters' names and the people and what they're doing. Yeah. And so I believe Macandra of Half Bay or whatever, the duck. And Insane that you knew that. I, I, Again, I don't know if I would have, but I, I, I did all this last night. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I also agree, Crucible, knocking it out of the park, um, that there's, yeah, a, lot, yeah. there's I, a lot of games that are good at this, but uh, the Free League games, Forbidden Lands in particular, is really good at saying, these are the things that we care about, mm. and so these are the things that I'm giving XP for. And again, not to go off on a side tangent, but this is one of the things that I've always talked about when people use, when you're playing a traditional D&D &D or Pathfinder 2nd Edition, maybe sort of an adventure path, and you give milestone-based experience. Basically, when you say, when you reach the next cutscene, everybody levels up. Yep. What you are telling your party is... That's what's important. That's what's important. The only thing that you need to do is follow the damn adventure. Yep. That's now, all to, be fair, matters. to be fair... That might be great for you because yeah. you're basically telling your party, I will reward you with nothing unless you do what I want you to do. 
if you go this way and that, yeah. you know, that, that it, way. It just depends on the incentive structure that you want. Yeah. And or what right. they want. Correct. Your, your group might be like, look, we just want to keep progressing to the end of the story. Correct. Perfect. Then we are going to make sure that you guys progress to yeah. the end of the story. Correct. <laughs> if the group's like, I don't, we don't care about any of this. We don't know that. I just want to go through the story. You're like, okay, great. Then we should definitely reward you that Do you way. prefer a more RP or a lot tactical game? I don't know if that exactly makes sense. Well, you think you perform a role playing heavy or tactical game? Oh, I don't necessarily okay. think that those two things have to be opposite. Yeah. Um, because you know, Keith, I, I think the uh, understanding of role playing um, it, it has to be broader than what you might be thinking of. Role playing can be, role playing can be ha- can be in combat. You know. What do we got? <laughs> just reading save for as in pop those like I only read part of it right now, <laughs> but it's just like feels weird saying I only love Bob ten bucks worth. So how about? I'm madly in, in like with him. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, so our, our super chat goal is uh, we love Bob. And then our tip goal is the other nights are okay too. <laughs> um, and um, yeah. So, uh, you know, again, we, we've done, we've done many streams about XP and yeah. how that motivates people. And I, you know, I see, you know, Crucible says I hate milestones. So, so, so much, so, so, so much. And generally speaking, it just depends. So do I, 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 hate I know milestone. it just depends on what I, I want to do experience. mostly because I feel like milestone based experience points is the opposite of rewarding player agency. Right. Yeah, then we have those X when you do XP though. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of gets goofy. You're like, we're a hundred XP away. Uh, maybe we just save for 10 more minutes and go find something to just murder. Yes. <laughs> like it kinda I mean, gets, well, that's if your game is rewarding. The, the best that I had. The, the go murder Correct. thing. Correct. You know, when like, you did the treasure one for Dungeon Time Extreme, it when was we, so nice. When, now, doesn't it feel different when you go, we're so close to leveling up. Maybe there's just one more stash that's of loot saying. that we can go Which means plunder, usually you have to which explore. Plunder, that feels much different, doesn't it's it? It's way different. It feels way different. It, I love that. that yeah. And that's why when we were talking about it, I was like, I love the – I actually I actually liked when they did Treasure but for XP. But that's because in that game, XP was diegetic, mm-hmm. right? What XP in a, in the, in a normal sense is like, what, what am I getting experience for? I, adventuring, I guess. And you might say, well, it doesn't make sense that you get experience points for Treasure. It doesn't make sense that you get experience points for anything that you do. But when you tie it to something that exists in the world, right, then suddenly it becomes much more clear and focused. And I think people, you know, you know, tend to tend to attack that a little bit heavier. I mean, great example is if you want to be one of the five people who watched our Root campaign, um, <laughs> go watch these guys play Root. Number one, okay. Number one, terrorism. I, I don't. I don't want to get. <laughs> I don't want to get up on a side trend in here. The the for me where 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 a game like. Root or Powered by the Apocalypse games, you know, really go off the th- – is when people start to <laughs> – they start to car op mm. their character for role-playing. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I love that. Yeah. Okay? So, like, a great example of that was, like, in Root where you're like, well, I want to make sure that I'm hitting my XP triggers. Mm-hmm. My character has changed. I don't do that anymore. So I am going to change one of my XP triggers that I is do more like in that. line with the way that my character is being played. That way, I can get rewarded for doing these things. Yeah, that's that's like a different type of like that's like growth, like character growth versus like just XP leveling. Like, yeah, um, you know, because a lot of times you level, you just you get stronger. Uh, you got a cool new weapon or a cool new armor, or your items or feet. It's weird to say like my personality changed. Like that's a different type of thing, right. which is really interesting. Right. Actual growth. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like actual growth. Right. Exactly. So, um, but anyways, uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's just one of those things where I think that and and this system, um, Dragon Bane, I really feel like it doesn't. I mean, it does level up in a sense, but it's it's very slow. Yeah. You actually more level out. Sure. Um, because uh, because like well, HP and let, like let, all hop. that stuff actually stays very very yeah. very static. Let's hop over to the character sheet. Yes. So we've talked a lot about. Pushing. Mm-hmm. We've talked about these conditions. Because mm-hmm. again, when you push, you gain a condition. Now, Bob, and once you have that condition, you get veins. Yes. How do we get rid of conditions? You gotta use the rest. Yes. So there's there's two, there's I think there's three different types of rests, if I'm not mistaken. There's the round rest, the shift rest, um, and then oh sorry, the round rest, the stretch rest, and the shift rest. And the round rest you can do like during combat and it just gets like um it gets like your willpower back. A couple of a couple of willpower it's points. It's like a D six worth of willpower. Okay. Well, maybe we should talk about willpower first. Then. Okay, yeah, go okay. go for willpower. All right. So if you look in the bottom right, your character has two tracks in this game. You have HP hit points. We know them. We know and love them. They're there in the bottom right hand corner in that nice big red box. Okay, and above that we have our willpower points. Okay, real quite real simple. Hit points, 
you know, how much meat's on your bones. That's right. Okay? You don't want that to go to zero. And willpower points are basically how many points do you have to do cool special attacks, magic spells, um, you know, certain, um, you know, key powerful abilities. Like the character sheet that we're looking at here, uh, Macander of Half Bay. Oh, yeah. If you go ahead and take a look at his character sheet on the left hand side, he has his abilities and spells. These are the things that sometimes will cost willpower points. That's right. And so in his case, he is ill tempered because all duck people, which are called the mallards, have this trait, which is that they are ill, Ill, Ill tempered. And it costs three, three willpower points. And he can activate this ability when making a skill roll, and he gets a boon to it. That means yep. you get to roll with advantage. That's right. Okay? Big time. But you become angry. And you take the condition. Right. If you're not already angry. Yeah, that was, that was you, you would like abuse this, right? Because like once well, you were angry, you're like, I'm, I'm angry, so I'm just going to keep. Yeah, once I was angry, I would <laughs> once just Once you keep... hulked out. <laughs> right. Once I hulked. Well, the way, again, I, I like to think of this as mechanically reinforced role playing. Yep. Imagine these duck people, okay, are known. And I wish, I wish again, the PDF is, is up on screen, but I, I can't scroll to the next one so you can see the picture of this guy. Oh, he, of, he, he of just, McCander. He just looks like a grumpy ass knight, duck knight, okay? Um, the ducks are interesting. For me, okay, if we take a look at this guy's character sheet, all right, his uh, int is 12. Mm -hmm. Not his worst, but it's not great. But then if you take a look at his int based skills, Awareness is a five. Beast lore is a five. Bushcraft is a five. Healing is a five. Yeah. Languages is a five. Seamanship is a five. Spot hidden is a five. This guy sucks with his intelligence. That's the one that got the spot hidden check. Okay. So <laughs> it was so, great. <laughs> when we're playing, one of the first things I'm thinking to do when it comes up when I fail a roll and I want to re-roll and push is I'm thinking I want to mark angry. That's right. Because, you know, my, char my character gets frustrated easily, but mechanically it's because I already suck at this. That's right. And me getting a Bane when I only had a 20% chance of succeeding without a Bane, it, it's, it's not as much of a cost. Yep. But what does that do? It means that my character is now angry, but now this is where the mechanics inform the role play. My character is ill-tempered. So when he's pissed off, that's when he tends to get shit done. That's right. And now, mechanically, I'm rewarded for popping my ill-tempered a bunch because that's going to make me mark my angry condition, but I've already become angry. That's right. I got angry because, you know, I tried to kick down the door. I failed the strength check. I'm pissed off, so I go, mark angry, push, roll again. Now my character's angry. And now when I come in there and there's a bunch of skeletons, I'm just like, ill -tempered, these yeah. motherfucker, yeah. you know, I'm ill-tempered. And now I'm spending my will points to, to, to get all these boons on all my attack rolls. The, the ill-tempered one's nice because it just requires you to mark angry, whether it's there or not. Right. Whereas when you push, you have to find a new condition to Correct. mark. Right. So if you could, and now we're talking about the tactics of this character, but that's a nice way to get around some of it. <laughs> right. So again, it's me car hopping, mm -hmm. it's me playing the character mechanically well. But what ends up happening is everyone goes, oh, you know Macander. Once something pisses him off, Quack. he just starts, he, he, he becomes like a Hulk. Yep. And he's just mean and angry and grumpy and he's just like i don't have fucking time for this and he's just smashing faces that's the thing cap okay i'm always angry so to be able <laughs> that's the thing that's the thing cap Whack, i'm always angry so that well, being said save versus also said oh. xp made more sense uh to me when people leveled at different rates when everyone is level four at 100 xp away how is that different than milestone leveling completely and totally agree with you. Sabers. I like a different leveling. Uh, you have been exposed to it. I like it a and lot. And you like it. I love it. Yeah. I I'm all, I've am i always been a fan of different experience points. I was a fan of old school, yep. of different classes needing different experience point values to level up. Yep. I always thought that was fun and cool and neat and a cool way to balance it. Um, I, I Again, I just feel like uh, I, I'm I'm with you, say versus. I'll, I'll, I'll do you one better, say versus. This is, this is I talk about the psychology of role-playing games all the time. People, you need to pay attention. Get your notebooks out. <laughs> Think of no, no, I'm serious. You show up to a session. You guys do a bunch of stuff. You make some progress. The GM says, you know, we don't do milestone leveling. I'll just give you experience points. You get 500 experience points. You go, cool. So what I did didn't really matter. Yep. The only thing that mattered is that we did the one thing that made you happy. So what I do doesn't matter. So, so the goal of my game, people, this is how people work. They're like dogs, okay? I'm like a dog too. They go, okay, so the way to level up, which is what I want, even in subconsciously, 
it, a, lot of, a lot of people want. want it consciously. Yeah, yeah. But some people, most people are going to want it consciously. They're, they get a sense of, you know, like, side tangent. People always talk about don't feed your dogs, right? Dog, you know, begging for scraps. And I've seen, this is, I grew up with my parents. I see my sister do this all the time where they go, the dog will be sitting there begging. And, you know, they're eating dinner. And they're basically like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give you food, right? And the dog is sitting there begging and begging but throughout the entire dinner, okay? And the, the people think they're being so good because they're telling the dog no and they're not going to give them any scraps during the meal. Then the meal finishes and then they give the dog the plate. All you have taught that dog is if I beg long enough and I don't give up, if I just keep on begging, got the reward. I'll get the reward. Yep. So you have actually reinforced the behavior. Because you've shown, actually shown them, you need to dig in. You need to be really persistent. If yeah. you, even if I tell you no five times, you eventually, dig in. eventually you'll <laughs> yeah. get it. And so the same thing is true with role playing games. Yep. <laughs> believe it or not, and players will respond to what they are motivated by and what gives them, you know, sort of that increase, uh, that sort of moving forward. So if you show up and you go, I, uh, why did we get experience points? Well, because the GM liked what we did this session. Okay, so the the goal of my character the goal of my me as a player yeah. should be what do i need to do to make the gm happy but worse than that let's say i don't show up and i come back and everyone goes hey we all gained a thousand experience points you leveled up and that, and I, that is the worst so then i go oh so me being here doesn't even that, matter that when we did at least dtx if you didn't show up you did not get the xp Correct. and i loved it I, I and i was like smith is a higher level than me well he's here every week i missed a couple weeks and therefore i'm behind that's what it is. Yeah. That's that's the way it goes. I, and actually, I'd go so far as to say, if they if if Smith did something that got the reward, he should only get the reward. You know, because I have to do something. Yeah. I'm just sitting here at the back of the you know just hanging on. Right. I mean, this this system has a couple of different things. Obviously, it has written about yeah. how to how to level well, up. So real quick, but they also have a weird. With the boons and veins. So willpower is a resource that mm -hmm. will deplete as your character uses their special abilities and spells. Hit points will deplete as your character takes damage. Now, you can see that your character has armor and a helmet, okay? Uh, in this case, Macander has full plate or plate armor, which has an the armor beast. value of six. And armor in this game works as damage reduction. Yes, and you maybe you should explain that. Maybe you should explain the attack rolls. <laughs> oh, sure, Bob. Please. Okay, yeah, okay. So uh, uh, I guess... Um, a normal D20 system, you roll your um, D20, you add it to your attack modifier, and then you're hoping to beat their armor class. If you did, you succeeded, and then you take your damage dice and you roll that, and you know, plus your strength. There's just so many numbers, and it's fine. And I've done it for years, not as many as Derek, but years. This now says you roll your D20, and if it is lower or equal to your uh, weapon that you're using. So you, I'm good with hammers. Like So if your hammer skill is yep. 16. All I got to do is roll under six, 16, 16 or under. Or 16 or under. That means I succeeded. No matter what, I succeeded. So all I have to do now is roll my damage. He takes the damage. So I roll like maybe it's like maybe it's like 2d6 plus 4 or something like that. Boom, I rolled it. I get. Actually, it's, it's never plus 4, right? Uh, it's plus a, a, a boon die. You don't ever. Have it's a usually flat plus modifier. like a d4 or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. It's like plus a damage die. Yeah, like if, we look, if we look here at McCander. Yeah. Okay, he has a battle axe at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. It does 2d8 damage. And if we look near the top, his damage bonus on strength-based attacks is a d4. Yep, so he so. gets a 2d8 on regular attacks, but then if he uses like... A strength-based attack. Yep, which is like melee. Yep. Then he gets to add the d4. So I roll that dice, boom, I did that much damage. Now, if he has armor, it just subtracts it. That's it. You're done. And so, McCander last night, I hit him three or four times because I rolled well, but his armor reduced every single one of them because... Minus six is a lot. <laughs> yes. And so he's like, that's how it works. And I was telling this to Frosty, our player last night. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you, you're you're a beast. You have this great armor on. And I, even though I'm hitting you, it's not really hurting you. And you're not doing any of these special um, reactions like parrying or dodging to hurt your armor, which you need to repair it. Right. So yep. th this this is also kind of getting into a Forbidden Lands Year Zero yep. conversation because I really like this. So a couple of things here. Let's look at this character sheet really quick while we talk about the, the combat. Look, it, it, fighting is a part of this game. There's no doubt about it. Yes. But to be one of the things, again, one of the things I really like about this game is hell. Your combat skills are just skills. Yeah. They're no different than your other skills. That's right. You know, they, they exist. They have their own little category, but everything works the same way. So it's very unified, which means it's not like, hey, 
when we're rolling, when we're doing skill checks, we kind of use this set yeah. of rules. But now we're rolling in combat, we kind of use a different set of rules. No, it's oh. all the same. Easy to pick up on. Easy to pick up on. But if we take a look at this armor, you can see below it, it says Bane on. And all three of these are, are it's kind of probably small on your screen. Yep. But this character, because they're wearing plate armor, has a Bane. Remember, that means you're rolling basically with yeah. disadvantage on sneaking rolls, evading rolls, and acrobatics rolls. Yep. It is a real, this is not. He's a knight. He has full plated up. This is not Pathfinder 2 where you're like, oh, I have a minus two armor check penalty. Oh, but my, I'm, I'm, yeah. I have a high enough strength, so I don't have ar any armor check penalty for wearing no, plate you're armor. you're in trouble. If you're wearing plate armor, you're going to be really uh, uh, slowed down. Yep. Your character could eventually acquire a helmet as well, which will give them which even more did. armor. <laughs> but then you get Banes on your awareness rolls yep. and ranged attack rolls. You can't see shit <laughs> when you're wearing a big helmet, heavy helmet, but it'll make you more defensive. Yep. So it feels like more of a choice. Right. Yeah. Um, and you could imagine if the characters needed to sneak in somewhere, McCander might leave the plate armor at home yeah. because rolling with a bane on sneaking is not going to end up good for anybody. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, and so it, it's a very but but this is this, so so armor class is abstracted into the amount that the armor absorbs. Yes. So it, it's passive. But this is where the the game has some pretty cool tactics, which is again, it's all about giving players a choice. Because it feels like, well, wait, so the person makes an attack roll and then I take damage minus my damage. So isn't that the same as D&D? &D? No, because what you can do in this game is you can choose to try to dodge the blow parry or parry or the blow. But only if you have not gone yet. Right. So when, in this system, I guess there's another thing we should talk about. <laughs> there's a lot of things in this system. There, uh, there are a lot of things that are different than D and D and Five E. But um, in this system, when the when it's time to start combat, everyone gets dealt out an initiative card at random. Actually, that happens every round, and uh, it's like a one through ten. And if you're one, you go first. Okay, so you decide what to do, or you could like swap with with someone else that has one up, face up. Okay, and then if your turn's over, you put it face down. So you cannot parry or dodge if your card is face down. It means it, your turn's gone. Right. So your reaction is technically gone. Correct. Because yep. it's kind of all kind of quasi simultaneous yes, in its right. own way. But it's 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 pretty quick. Yeah. Like if you know you're probably going to dodge your, your, or or parry, you're like Ugh, this is in rough shape. You'll you'll just going to want to switch your order, try to screw but yourself down. If you haven't gone yet, that's right. And someone attacks you, you can choose to try to parry. That's right. That attack, and then you roll a. Uh, a skill check, I believe, right? Yeah, I just got to find the exact rule. And if you succeed, you can essentially turn that attack into a miss. Mm -hmm. Same thing with evading, um, which you can kind of leap out of the way. Uh, one thing that I really like, I think this is true in Dragon Bane. I know it's true. In, you can't parry a monster's attacks, but you can evade them, I think. I don't know if that's, that, if that's well, true. Well, a lot of monster attack will say it cannot be parried. Uh, it cannot be parried. Yeah. Uh, monsters, uh, as a rule, monster attacks cannot be parried. Right. Monster meaning like big, scary, massive. Yeah. So in this thing. game, like there's like, cr there's, there's creatures. Neutromancer, take care. I like, <laughs> Neutromancer says, time for my weekly Gloomhaven game. I like that game because it makes me lose any desire to play tactical <laughs> RPGs. That is, that is 100% accurate. Yeah. Yeah, after, you know, think about playing Descent. When you're playing Descent, which is fairly close to Gloomhaven, like the idea to like, I want to get back to a grid-based combat. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You're, no, you're worn out. Good. But yeah, so there, in this game, there's like there's like the creatures that you would fight, which are like basically just NPCs, like these little goblins that are going to stab you, and they're going to be doing movements of that. Then there's monsters. Monsters are ferocious; like they are nothing to 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 chirp at. They don't act the same. Um, they sometimes have multiple initiatives, even like weak monsters, and they like have a D6 chart and how they do their attacks and damages. Like it's it's much different, and so they don't really have the same ability to be parried. But parried in, in general uh, lets you sort of like use your uh, sword or your shield uh, to like to to parry the blow, and then it, and it it goes against like the uh, the durability of the weapon. I think you make a crafting roll uh, on it. But what do I roll to when I parry? What is the actual procedure, Bob? Oh, let me uh, let me just double check that. No one actually parried last night. Oh, okay. Um, uh, that's how you. Um, yeah. So the thing, the most important thing, while well, Bob looks that up, I'm just curious. 
because I don't remember the rule. I definitely did it. Oh, it's but... a roll against your skill level for that weapon. Okay, yeah. You roll against your skill level for that weapon. Like, if, if you have shield, you're using a shield, or if you're using your sword, use the sword. And then you has to, if the parry succeeds, the enemy attack hits your weapon or shield instead, you suffer no damage. However, the, if the damage exceeds your weapon's durability... Right, then the weapon uh, becomes damaged. That's right. So uh, the, the, the weapon... Then you have to go craft yourself. Yeah, so if you look down the bottom of the sheet, you'll see that yeah, uh, every weapon and the shield have has a durability number. Mm-hmm. Okay, the battle axe's durability is nine, mm-hmm. which means that if I'm fighting and I parry with the battle axe, now keep in mind that's gonna, I'm not going to be able to attack this turn. That's right, you're okay? giving up your turn. I'm basically. giving up my turn, mm-hmm. right? I'm choosing to use sort of a, of an action to sort of do this, um, but it might make sense because if I succeed, then that attack does no damage to me. That's right. But the the person will still roll their damage. If that damage is nine or higher, which is my battle axe's durability, my battle axe becomes broken. Yeah, if it's less than nine, it does nothing. It, it it's sort of like Magic the Gathering mm-hmm. monster toughness. You either kill the battle axe or it does nothing. You don't have to track the individual damage, and that's by the way why you could see why the shield is so good at parrying. Oh yeah, because the durability on the shield is fifteen, which means that the shield will only be damaged if you can do fifteen or more yeah, damage. Yeah, which a is so attack, hard to do. Which is a lot of damage. Yeah. So you know, in a certain way, you know, um. You know, do it. Um, Doc Flamingo says, second separate role for defense. Role should be minimized in combat to keep play moving if you have me. Doc Flamingo, no. That second, because here's the thing, Doc Flamingo, when you do that active defense, you're using your turn to yeah. do that, which means th- normally on your turn, you might have attacked, mm-hmm. which would have involved a die roll. Instead, you chose to defend on the monster's turn or the, yep. the, the goblin's turn, so you made a die roll. But the number of die rolls in the round has stayed the same, Yeah, which is you made one roll. Which is also, yeah, a lot less than a regular D&D combat that right. I've ever played. And they go so fast. Sure. Like we went through those combats so fast last night. Right. <laughs> and so really what it comes down to, Doc, is you just getting to make a decision. Yep. So after you've parried, you be, turn your do I want, yeah, when you Yeah, when you, you turn your card over, you don't get to go. And more importantly, you can't parry again or you can't dodge again. That's right. And so, so now the second monster. So can, now the second monster could come in and attack you. So Yeah, and, and the initiative thing was weird at first to me because I'm so used to rolling for initiative. And adding more numbers. <laughs> I get it. But the, the the card roll thing, card throw, like, here you go. Uh, you're one, you're three, you're five. Okay, good. All right, everybody throw them back. You're two, the, you're, three, you're six. Did you play with any of the classes? Isn't there like a rogue class that gets two, and then you keep the hot, like whichever the lower uh, well, one is? Well, the wolf has a will PowerPoint that they can spend to uh, keep his initiative order. So he he got the one, and he was like, I'm locking that in. Got so that when everyone else shuffled theirs back in, he did not. So he, he, had, he just got to keep his one. Yeah, which is really nice. Now, I thought that I thought that would be slow. It's actually not. It's actually pretty fast and pretty efficient. If you're doing the VTT at home, it's crazy. it does fast. it for you. Automatically. It's so nice. It's faster than even like Pathfinder Literally, six. the last person in combat, I clicked the arrow, and it just <laughs> shuffled it all back. It, and I was yeah, like, just, what just happened? And it was already cool. done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah. VTT. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> let, let's let's take a talk. Let's, oh, VTT is so now, good. you know on this channel, I have poo-pooed VTTs before. <laughs> I like Foundry and all, but like I prefer to play at the table. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 Dragon Bane has a free system module yep. on Foundry. Foundry, but it doesn't have any of the details. You have to type it in all in. But if you're willing to pay 25 bucks or something, you can get the premium made by Free Leagues Foundry VTT module. And let me tell you something, it's really good. Yeah, it does a really good job. It was a, I I I was highly impressed. By this VTT I think my module. players were as well. Like they all were. Well, one, it's nice when you're using the free league art, which already looks great. The maps look fantastic, and again, it, it, everything was sort of done for you. The initiatives. The only thing it didn't do was was sort of a damage was taking damage. But everything else, uh, if you had a bane on something, it did it automatically. When you push your roll, you click it. You click which one you wanted to push. Boom! It was it was very nice. Yeah, it was very it was very, very smooth. Good. So um, kudos to that. And 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 Gurney, you were absolutely right because we did play this in person as well, Bob. Yes, right, we did. And switching, we swapping initiative cards felt very intuitive and tactical. Yes. Here's the eight. Here's my two. Cool. You get to go first. Yep. Yeah. yeah well, it was actually very easy. And and again, it just saves that math step. It just seems like it's it's nice. You just have a big number. I'm, eight, I'm number eight this turn. Yeah, and so I was really impressed with this Free League's um, um, Dragon Bay module. It's one of the best I've ever seen. I honestly would happily pay 20 or $30 for more of these. So if you're listening out there, if you're a company, oh, yeah. spend the money, like develop these things, do it right, and make it nice because it makes it just such a for such yeah. cleaner experience. I think our, our Patreon, if you're not a member already, 
look in the description below. You can uh, get access to our Patreon. Uh, there's many tiers that you can join at, uh, which uh, gets you access to our Discord. And there's a lot of people playing a ton of games. Derek had made a YouTube uh, post there, Dave, just all the different games yeah. that were being played. I played Dragon Bane last night with a few of our members, and I think other people are also going to be running Dragon Bane for other members of the community. Correct. It's a hot one right now. I'm, I'm hyping it up. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit. <laughs> I'm little, leading this hype train. A little bit of hype train, yeah. <laughs> um, and, of course, we have a community gaming server. So if you're a member of the Nights of Less yep. Call Patreon, you can not only use our Forge server, which is our cloud-based server that we play games on, but you can also use our uh, you know, license to, yep. to run these games. So um, that way you don't have to pay the, any money That's uh, right. other than joining the Patreon, of course. Um, but anyways, uh, very simple, very intuitive. And being able to say, I parry that or I dodge that, it's very empowering. Yes. And, it, and it's not free. No, you know, it's not like your reaction in Pathfinder 2 Correct. or d It's right? more Where of a sacrifice. It's more of a sacrifice. It's actually an interesting strategic play. But it also keeps play. the number of things that you're doing in a round to a minimum, and, which and means faster. it goes quick. And again, if you liked Pathfinder and you wanted that tactical um, crunch, that's this is not probably what you're wanting to play. But if you're just, like I said, I really feel like the Baron Pretzel really land, knocked out of the park. It felt casual, uh, deadly, fast, smooth. Like everyone had a good time. No one felt, I, th I, I again, I'm speaking for my players here. No one felt, I think, dragged down grinded out or tired everyone felt engaged it was quick it was easy it uh was but it wasn't like taxing like you could like oh i could play that again next week like it's just so easy <laughs> yeah um so the last thing that i want to make sure we talk on is which i because again it was an area that i thought was really really cool in the game is how leveling up and how skill level oh, yeah. ups and all that other stuff work okay um so let's take a look at the character sheet so you'll notice all of the skills have a little box next to them, yep. right? So, Bob, what does that box do? Well, at the end of the session, okay, so that's first. There's a box next to it. So if ever during the session you roll a dragon or a demon, so a dragon, net one, demon, bad, 20. Right. Weird, of, weird, but I get it. <laughs> right. Um, you mark that tick. So you can't only mark it once. So at the end of the session then... It's going to ask you for every one of these ticks that you have next to that skill, you're going to roll the d20 again. This is when it gets a little weird, but you if you now roll over right. your skill, which means the, the better you get at a skill, the harder it is. The higher your skill, the harder it is to level up. You then increase that skill by one. Right. So let's use, Not an, your exa attributes, let's but your use skills. an example. So mm -hmm. Macander here has an axes skill of 14. Yep. And we know that Macander has a battle axe. So he's probably going to be making a lot of axe attack rolls. So he's going to be rolling a lot of axe weapon skill checks. During the course of the session, I roll either a nat 1 or a nat 20 yep. when I am uh, attacking with my battle axe. And that's which what I could, said. Which could be great or it could be, nah, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, hey, you you, you messed up really bad and that's you, what I you say, learn from your sometimes mistake. Sometimes when you get a demon, you're kind of like, that sucked, but like, oh, I did get the ticket. So that's kind of cool. So then I would mark that little box next to axes, mm -hmm. which is a, again, 14. At the end of the session, I'll roll a d20, and if I roll a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20, then my axes skill goes up by yep. 1 to 15. In yep. other words, it is hard to get your skills to really high level, yes. but your really low level skills are easier to level up. Are easier to level up. Yep. But that's not the, so another, it's basically, it's diegetic, right? If you use a skill a lot, you're more likely to roll 1s and 20s, yep. and there will be a reward, and you'll get a chance to level it up. But... You also earn, in a session, experience points. Correct. But you'll note, there's really, there's no, there, you don't track experience points on your sheet. Nope. This is, a, this is because, PBTA. <laughs> because you spend them yep. that session. You spend them at the end of the session. At the end of the session, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So the experience points that you earn, you don't track them. You're not leveling up Correct. or anything like that. You spend them to yep. do what, Bob? So at the, end of the, at the end of the session, you look at your chart. You look at your skills, and you you've already have those marks from the boons and the or from the dragons and the demons, and then you look and you ask yourself, uh, those are five questions. Five so, questions. So, did you participate in a game session? Obviously, that one's a tick. But again, if you didn't show up, you don't hypothetically you don't get it. Right. Uh, did you explore a new location? This gets back to what you liked is like getting out and doing the thing. So go explore new locations. Not 
We visited the town again. We spent a whole day shopping. No, no, no. Go out and be an adventurer. But you could go and spend the whole town yeah. time shopping. You but just, you just get the one for a game. Do, you don't get that. Yeah. Did you go and explore a new location? That's so right. players are going to look at that and say, oh, I'm incentivized. So this game is incentivizing me to go out and explore new places. Yep. If I want to get more experience points, I need to do that. All yep. right, Buffy, and then did you defeat one or more dangerous adversaries? Now, yesterday I, I uh, chalked this up to um, uh, basically a monster. Like, because. The NPCs, they're not, they're like a little goblin's not going to be, but like an actual threatening thing. And, and if you guys have played this experience, there are some deadly encounters that they are going to come across. These, this game, if you've played it, you understand it can be very deadly. So it's quick and fast, and but it, it does not uh, lose out on the deadliness factor. So you were in this comment, you were like, holy crap, I'm going to hit for a lot. I'm going to hit for a lot. There's a lot of back and forth. So my players definitely felt this. One of them got knocked down pretty much dead. And um, they knew... The one guy was at one, like uh, for a little bit too. You, you, the deadliness here. The monsters do a lot of damage. So, was there? Uh, did you defeat one or more dangerous adversaries? Yes. You tick. And okay, so I didn't explain what. These are the questions you're asking. There's two more I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about in a second. Just finish the questions. But okay, the last uh, next one. Did you overcome an obstacle without using force? Which is interesting. So, did you not murder hobo everything <laughs> in existence? Uh, my party was able to convince someone to do something without killing them. Liked it, and then they. Derek, I'll talk about this after after we're done filming, but they had a great um, way to end this campaign session, which I absolutely loved, without doing murder hoboing and didn't use any force and was able to escape and basically solve the issue. I was like, yes, tick every one of you. But And then the last one, did you give in to your weakness? And this is an optional rule. So did you, on your character shirt, there's a personality that you have, and did you give in to it? If you did, then then you tick that box. Yeah. So now it's an optional rule. Yeah. But so one we, of my players did not actually yesterday. And I said, so everyone else gets uh uh four. Um and you don't get that four. You don't everyone gets five and you don't get you get four. So right. one of them did not level up the so same. So if we look at McCander here in the upper left hand mm -hmm. corner, you'll see that his weakness is that he is foolhardy and he always goes first. So if you play your you know character as literally kicking in the door, I'm just gonna barge in there traps be damned, ambushes yep. be damned, and you end up getting, you know, walking straight into an ambush, at the end of the session, you could say, hey, look, my character was foolhardy. Remember when yeah, I... You remember? I, I, when I bust in there and everyone was like, we need to be cautious. And I was like... You but know, this we talked about with you... Ducks wait for no man. Right. When you talked about sort of mechanically incentivizing sort of the role-playing in yeah. a sense, you sort of feel it. Like, why is the duck always running in? Well, that's what he's incentivized to do. His character says it. It's rewarding XP in it. But you sort of get this, like, personality flavor. Right. Not just, like, yeah, he goes and hits things really hard. No, no, he's, like, doing things that are specifically a personality trait on his kind of character sheet. Right. And so any of these that you answered yes to, yep. you then get to tick one of the boxes of your skills that you have not ticked yet. And right. then, so you get a chance to improve some of those skills that you didn't get to. Right. So for example, throughout the course of the game, mm -hmm. let's say that we rolled a nat 20 on axes and yep. we rolled a nat one on acrobatics. Those would already be ticked. But as we go at the end of the session, my character acquired four experience points yep. from answering some of those questions in the affirmative. So I get to mark four more of these boxes. Yep. Which means at the end, I'm going to have six different skills, four from my experience, two from my nat ones and nat 20s, my dragons and my demons, and I'm going to roll a d20 for each of them. And if I roll higher than the current skill, it goes up by one. Yeah, I think Ender's, I, I know Ender's in the chat here. I think he had like six or seven uh, advancements or, or ch uh, a chance. And I think he failed like every one of them. <laughs> like I maybe he got one or right. Maybe it was Edril. And one of them, they did terrible right. at the end of the session. That's the way it goes. You don't always... You just have a better chance of leveling up the lower your skill is. Well, it also, you know, it's a push your luck mechanic. That's right. Right. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. <laughs> like if you use your experience points to level up your character's low skills. That's right. You're much more likely to get the improvement. I turned my five into a six. I turned my six into a seven. But when you're like, I want a min max and I want my axes to be 19. Okay. Well, you're rolling against a 14. You got to roll 15 or higher. Okay. You well, did it. Great. Your axes is 15. You there. You can't go higher than 18. Okay, fine, 18. When you hit 18, you get heroic ability. All right, all right. That's, that's actually like the pinnacle. When you get that big 18, then all of a sudden you get to unlock, like, um, you immediately gain a new heroic ability of your choice. After a grand heroic deed, the GM can also just give you one. But ideally, that's when you get, like, the, the but, sweet willpower thing But that, that is do. tough to do. Because to get all the way means, to 18, that's that been means, grinding. That means you needed to be at 17. Yes. Then you needed to roll an 18, 19, or 20. That's only yep. a 15% chance. And you only get to make that roll... Once per session. That's right. 
So that is, you know, you grinding for that. Well, <laughs> yeah, this this game, it's it's hard to max out. It's you'll, you'll be able to get your lower level skills up. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you'll note that hit points. No, nope, didn't talk about that. We did not talk about that. Yeah, but they don't really change. They don't really change I that think, much. I think again, I haven't read too much. When you look in, at this character; yeah. it's got sixteen hit points. Um, and while you may eventually, you know, get you a, might get a, something an item or, or an, some kind a, of ability, an item or ability, but more or less, your character is going to have the same number of hit points throughout the course. And of there the are game. there are teachers in here where you can like learn to advance more in magic or other types of um, skills. Um, you can like pay a teacher, right? But th they have to be higher level than you in that skill, and they have to be willing to actually teach you, which is yeah. kind of a cool co concept. But you could really have a lot of fun with that. I feel like you could really play with that. Mechanic. Yeah. Now, now <laughs> Keith is asking, is there magic? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's definitely magic. Yeah, there we had one. We had one wizard yesterday, which is so magic is a little different in here. Um, and I'm gonna try to get this right because I I'm not the best at magic, as Derek knows. I'm a melee guy. I like to smash things. Um, but in magic, you can go. As long as you have the base magic, so in this case, uh, the player had fireball, and you can then increase the level that you cast it by spending more willpower. So they were going to cast it at a one level, two level, or three level. And the more willpower they spend, the more damage it does. Mm -hmm. But um, but you don't like learn new abilities without like uh, advancing your skill and, and getting more into uh, like a teacher and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. Edgel's on the chat to, uh, to 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 break it even further, but yeah. yeah. But but basically, long and the short of it is, it just uses your willpower. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of plays out like a lot of other abilities. I think it's two for it a is, magic spell, and then one for like a cantrip. I mean, th from the story I heard, you said that um, Edgel cast fireball. Yep. But then bash someone with his torch and did no. 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 Gull did it. So Gull, Gull, Gull bashed something with his torch and did more damage yep. than the fireball did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Edgel. Um, did a fireball level three and did, it did some good damage, but then uh, uh, goal came over with a, with a torch and did even more. So a fireball <laughs> rank one uh, uh, is an instant. This is fireball is a little different here. It's a single target, not a big burst, but the spell sends a fireball out of your hand. The fireball can be dodged or parried as a range attack. The fireball does 2d6 damage on a hit and sets fire to the flammable object. Each power level beyond the first level increases the damage by d6. You can go up to three. Right. So and if, each one costs two more willpower to do. Right. So it's base level. Or you create another fireball. It's one it's level. Cool. It's one willpower. Mm -hmm. But you could take it to level three. That'd be five willpower. Yep. But then you'd be doing four d6 damage. So then when you can increase your rank in like magic and spell casting, then you can do fire blast instead of fireball. Right. And so that you can you can get all the way up to fire bird. <laughs> right. And then once yep. and in this Firestorm. way, willpower kind of works like a mana system. Yep. Because once you know the spell, mm -hmm. you could keep casting that spell over and mm -hmm. over and over and over again as long as you have enough willpower points yep. in order to, to expend it. Yep. And then we, we talked about this before, but kind of like D and D and stuff like that, you have these kind of rest mechanics. And there's obviously there's the sort of the long, you know, the rest that lets you recover pretty much all of your hit points and all of your stats. But you can also take uh, what's called, they call it a stretch. Stretch rest. Um, and just, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's like a weird translation thing. Oh, it, the, the the round the, shift, the, the round the, stretch and shift. No, the round, a round rest and a stretch rest. Yes. It's just very strange. But, um, but anyways, uh, you can take little actions in combat or between combats to get a little bit Mm -hmm. of willpower and a little bit of hit points back. So, so the round for, rest gives you no hit points, just willpower. Right. But and then stretch rest gives you a D6 hit points and D6 willpower. Right. Which is like 15. And you can cure one condition. And one condition. Right. Yeah. But if someone's like succeeds on a healing roll and helps you, then you can get another D6 HP. Got it. So really, and uh, I, I, I would have thought that's like no big deal. Right. But my players yesterday were racking up conditions because they were trying to push a lot. Yeah. And so it becomes very apparent then that's actually when you want to heal, but you don't yep. heal a ton. <laughs> and, and I see some people in chat, and that's a very good point. What's so up? if you take a look at the right lower right-hand side of this character sheet, right above the green willpower points, you'll notice that there is a box, a checkbox, mm -hmm. for round rest and for stretch rest. Yep. You can't take infinite short nope. rests. Nope. And they were they were very aware of that you yesterday. You get one yep. of each before you take a, a before you shift. take your, your your big rest. Yep. Right. And so it's it is a it is a resource. It's powerful. You can get back some hit points and willpower points and cure a condition while you're sort of out in the you field. You better time it right. But you got to use it at the right time, and you got to make sure that you're doing it the right way. Um. And so there is a more of a sense of of you know the grind. Yeah. I just hope it doesn't turn into. I could see it being like what is that like the. 15 minute adventure day yeah just like uh well we are using your stretch rest and it looks really tough so we're just gonna head back to town yep 
And it's like, yeah, I can see that. I see that actually being as a negative well, in this that, system. But that is always going to be a problem in any D and D game. Um, if you do not have either reward incentives in place or punishing mechanics yeah. in place, right? Well, a lot of times too, like unless you got not enough gold just to like go to sleep at night. <laughs> Like sometimes you gotta make checks too. Like the 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 common in was like if you don't if you don't succeed on a roll on a good check, um, someone's snoring and you don't get a full night's rest, so you can't cure condition. Right, right. And I was like, oh, that was yeah, brutal. If, if you cheap out on the in room, <laughs> yeah, you might yeah. not even get rest. <laughs> um, and so you know, I mean, again, we've talked about this at length on this game of the system, but you know, ultimately, you know, these games that are resource intent, that you know, a lot of these RPG games really just come down to resource management. And Gurney brings up a good point. Like, there's there's uh, encounters that can happen when you leave places, and oh, I was going to use them if they were going to leave early. They 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 stuck it out and grinded it out, and I and I fully encourage you if that's the kind of tone that you want to set in your game that you do that. If you're if you want to be more casual, you can let them go back and rest, and, sure. and whatnot. But there are. Yes, leaving mechanics. Uh, yeah, they roll for the random encounter table. And again, we've talked about this at length on this channel before, but you know, this is what random encounter rolls to and from the dungeon used to do. That's right. Right where. Oh, I, and I told my players, I said, "You guys spend a little too much time. I'm going to be rolling random encounters." And they they even bought a tent because they were like nervous about sleeping. They bought rations. They were because you have to you have to actually like take a ration a day. You have to find a good night's sleep. And I'm like, I'm rolling for random encounters. You guys might may or may not find something that's right. pretty cool and so as a result of that uh you know it creates it creates this system right it becomes a push your luck mechanic yep. where you're kind of like well we could go and take the really dangerous journey to the dungeon and then fight one monster and then go back to town and fully recover but each time we're doing that we are running the risk of all mm -hmm. these other different random encounters now the part of the problem with modern d20 this started happening in third edition by the way i've talked about this on the stream before when you used to play old school D and D, you needed to get treasure. Treasure wouldn't kill you. Traps would kill you. Mm. Traps didn't give you any experience points. If you got hit with a trap, you sucked. Yeah. Monsters they gave you a little bit of experience points, but monsters could definitely kill you. Yeah. So treasure gave you a ton of experience points and didn't kill you. Traps gave you no experience points and would kill you. Monsters would give you a little bit of experience points and would definitely kill you. So that meant you were very much incentivized to avoid fighting bites, which meant that any time you went into the dungeon, what it was was it was a game yeah. of we have this many resources. We have this many torches, this many hit points, this many spells. And ideally, as we go into this adventure, that number is going to be ticking down. We're going to be losing hit points. We're going to be casting spells. But the amount of treasure... That we are gaining is going up, which yep. means the amount of experience points that we're giving up. But any time we fight a monster that has no chance to give us treasure, that's just only bad risk. for us. It's all risk. <laughs> it's only bad for us. Yeah. If we can avoid that fight. And we, this does that too, right? Because it, if I'm not mistaken, there's no reward. I mean, there's one XP at the end. If one you fought tick, a dangerous monster. Dangerous monster. Right. But after the second one. Right. So if you fought the one in the dungeon and then yeah. you guys leave. Right. You might now, to be fair, some... this game has a slightly different Correct. vibe because in technically in D&D, &D, old school D&D, &D, the best thing that you could do to maximize your chances of not dying, surviving, leveling up would be try to avoid every single fight you possibly can, try to go around every single combat, find sneaky ways to get in, get the treasure, and get out. Yeah. Because then you're going to get all the money, all the experience with little to no risk because you're not it. actually fighting. So it's weird. People think of old school D&D &D and they think of like, you know, more murder hobo. Actually, it's a horrible strategy. Your character sucked yeah. in original D&D. &D. They had like four hit points, three hit points. They died at zero. Your characters were terrible. You, the, the last thing that you should ever be doing is fighting anything. I like the deadliness of these monsters. <laughs> like the NPCs, the, the, the little goblins and whatnot. Yeah, they're... Those things you could probably chuck and fight and and whatnot, but when you come into a monster, it feels different. It it well, the, and, and I'm not saying it, it not only feels different because it's it is different. I mean, they roll differently. They have multiple initiatives. It is very dangerous. You start going, oh, he's just doing damage to me. Like, and someone will say, like, avoids your armor. You're like, oh, okay, I am getting straight wrecked right now. And they can do. Um, they found this out yesterday too. They'll start to uh, cause you to have fear conditions. They'll start to put conditions on you that you weren't even ready for. And that's, and those fear conditions can really stack up and start to add into your party's mix. Yeah, um, my my general sense is that the game isn't super deadly. Monsters are super deadly. Yes. Would you agree? Monsters are very deadly. And I think that's fine. Monsters yeah. feel like 
you know, that they're, they're, you know, they feel appropriately scary yeah. and dangerous. Forbidden Lands is very similar. Um, but going back to it, um, the game, like Dungeons and Dragons, getting a random encounter only depleted your resources. Yeah. So if you were playing this game and you're fighting a bunch of things, those things might kill you. But like you said, you might, it's not a, it's not even a dangerous foe. It's just some random goblins that are ambushing you on the way to the dungeon. You're not going to get anything for this. You're not going to get experience points. You're not going to get treasure. Yeah. It's just bad for you. And I, and I remember when third edition D&D came out. Third edition D&D came out. It was the first time you had like the CR system. And, you know, like when you think about Pathfinder yeah. 2 and you go, oh, this monster's worth this many yeah, what's, experience what's points. what's their level? And I remember playing it and my players going like, you know, oh, they fought an encounter. They got experience. They fought monsters. They didn't get any treasure. They got experience. And I, I could see the shift. Because within a few months, I remember the first time that I had a player in my campaign who the party sat in a room in the dungeon and they banged pots together oh, I heard the to story. try to get monsters to come in so that they could kill them, so that they could experience points. So the whole game's premise oh, it totally shifted shifts. Yes, right. because it went from we should avoid the monsters and we should find the treasure to let's stand here in the opening and set up a, a murder zone, yep. a kill zone, and bring the monsters in and then just execute them like they're cattle. And I was like, this feels very different. It's way different. Yeah, than, before you were trying to avoid, now you're encouraging. Now, before you were trying to, and why? Because of how experience points worked. Yep. Once you change what gets rewarded, you change what gets repeated. Now, I don't know if they're going to continue this, but at least in this adventure that they gave us, there is pages of random encounter tables depending on where you're at. So I'm like, are they, I think they're encouraging you to constantly roll on this. When I was in the dungeon that you played in, as well as the one I played in yesterday, um, I mean, and my players know this, I was constantly rolling. Like, you're in a room for a stretch, roll roll in the random encounter. You're in a room for a stretch, roll in the random encounter table. I'm like, all right, they want me to roll a lot yeah. on this table. And so you know, this is deadly. <laughs> you've played with me mm -hmm. in our Abomination Vaults campaign, and you played with me in our 5th edition um, uh, uh, Keep on the Borderlands, mm -hmm. Caves of Chaos. So you've played with me while I've been doing things like rolling random encounters. Yes. And you know I roll them out in front. Oh, yeah. And it makes the dungeon feel more dangerous. I And I was trying it to... Build, it's, it's like the Jenga tower. It builds that tension. And, and I kept telling them, like, you guys said, they were like, should we stay here a little longer? I was like, you guys can, but I'm going to roll on that table. And they were like, shit. Right. Like, I don't know you if go, we should. You, go, you could totally, yeah. you could totally search this room top to bottom. Yep. But I'm going to roll. That's right. And now the group goes, oh, what do we do? Yeah. And those conversations. That's tension. Oh, I love them. Yeah. Those are great conversations because now you feel like you're making them, you're pushing your luck. That's right. Right. And you're like, man, we, we really should explore this room, but is it worth the risk of another encounter? Well, because in, you might think in like in D&D &D or Pathfinder, you go, oh, well, it's fine. Whatever. We'll, we'll get some more experience points for fighting the monsters. No, you're not going to. Yeah. You're not going to get more experience points for fighting that monster. Yep. You get one experience point if you fought a deadly monster in the course of the entire camp uh, session. So yeah, yeah, um, and, and random encounters again don't always mean monster. No, no of course, which is which be. is something that I always have to remind right. myself. There's a difference of, between yeah. wandering monster and yeah. random encounter, right? Yep. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. A couple people here said uh, healing could be pretty strong if you have bandages. Yeah, they they went shopping for bandages. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, Crucible says if for some reason you don't have healing magic or the healing skill, dying can be pretty easy. Um, and yeah, you know, the game has like death saving throws. You don't like mm -hmm. die at zero or anything like that. But yeah, you have to like, you know, uh, what is it called? Like, you have to like kind of like, I think not, it's called not called mustard, but you have to like, like encourage rally. yourself. Yeah, you like to rally yourself or something. Yeah. And if you like roll like a crit, like it's two and you get two successes or two failures depending on a boon or bane. So or sorry, uh, like, critter uh, let's demon. make no mistakes about this. The game is not as deadly as old school D and D, where no. you go to zero hit points and you die. But the game is more deadly than a game like and, and it, Pathfinder and it, Two and or Fifth Edition D and D. Deadly, whether or not it is, I haven't played enough. Right. It, it feels deadly, but um, I, I don't know. It, it just it has that swingy nature because of the boons and the banes that it kind of jumps around. So you you sort of feel like it's fast and exciting and everything's happening. But also, I could just get swiped right here, and so right, you it has this like tension that's there where we should we should do what we were supposed to do, it. keep adventuring, find this solution, find this thing in the adventure, and maybe this is a really good adventure. I don't know, um, but they that my players felt it yesterday. They were like, yeah, we we should keep doing this or that. Yeah, and and again, I think that's, that that brings up an interesting point that has come up again and again as we've had this conversation. It came up when we played um, at, over at your house. Is I don't know that any of these rules are particularly you know, mind blowing. Oh yeah. But they all work together to create a feel mm -hmm. at the table 
that is very, very evocative. Yep. And it's quick and it's fast and it feels good yeah. for that type of game. Yeah, my and, brother uh, who doesn't really play a lot, he plays a lot of video games, he he enjoyed it. He said it was very simple, very easy. He felt like it he felt like he could just keep playing it. Like I really think someone wrote elegant, like it's 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 nice, it's simple, it's clean. You feel like you can really push through a lot in a session, which I really like too. Like I feel like I can get a lot done. Um like they 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 in a four hour session they did a fight, learned some lore, visited the town, went to a bunch of different shops, went out to a dungeon, did the whole dungeon, learned some more stuff, went back, and then leveled up in the night in four hours. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to do in a night. I mean, I remember the first time when we were first playing um, you know, like Dungeon Time Extreme. Mm-hmm. Oh. And you were just like so much happened. We did like five. We would do like five fights a night. You're like, yeah, you're like, we're great. getting five, six fights. You're like, you were used to like getting a one or two, one or two. Yeah. And it was just like, and with actual exploration yeah. and poking around and messing with traps and looking at, the, and you were just like, wow, this is such a different feel to the experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, and again, everything is about how much you weigh in on it. Like there is a lot of rules about journeying, hunting and fishing is in here and you can really weigh in on how you journey to different places in the lands. This has got a little forbidden lands. And I think that's a free league thing they like to do that. It's not just a simple, like, yeah, we, 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 we go that way. Well, that day is a two day March. And so how, you know, you guys got a tent, you guys, how you guys are getting food and stuff like that. So there is some stuff to it. Um, but uh, it's, it is still, I think, combat focused yeah. as most and, and, D20 systems are. And this is me as a game master. I'll also say this. And you know, I've talked about this before. I love, people said, well, what are your favorite PBTA games? And I said, my favorite PBTA games are the new breed of, fa- of, of PBTA games, like the ones from Magpie or Thirsty Sword Lesbians that have conditions. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because I love being able to tell somebody um, you know, they make a skill check. I want that skill check to be important. I want them to actually have an effect. If they fail, I don't want it to be like, well, nothing happens. Yeah. So I go, you fail, but lever, mar- <laughs> pull the lever, uh, yep. mark your condition. Yep. This game gives you the GM tool to do that because you have these six conditions. Yep. And if a player fails a check and or or something happens in the game that feels appropriate, you could be <sighs> like, yeah, that was. Mark disheartened. They You're have, definitely uh, disheartened. In the VTT, it's built in that you can like uh, have the um, the demon mishaps. So if they roll the nat 20, a mishap happens. And I remember uh, Gull, who played the the wolf yesterday, um, he was like, I come in, I slide in with my uh, with my spear, and I'm going to hit him. And he rolled the nat 20. and Which is bad. Which is really bad. And I rolled the mishap thing and said, you missed, obviously, and now you're, the monster gets a free attack on you. And then he stabbed him with his spear, and he was like, that felt right. Like, he's like, I felt right. He's like, I was going in with too high, you know, and, I, and everyone, everyone, like, loved it. They all felt like it was very appropriate, um, very simple. Again, I don't know. It just feels, there's a feel to it that I like. It's not super crunchy. So I, when we play with Smith and Derek and the rest of the crew, this is probably not the game that we're going to play. Because we like a lot more of campaign building, a lot more going on, crunchy systems with a lot of depth to campaigns and whatnot. But if we like couldn't figure out a game and we just wanted to roll something out and Smith had a hard day at work and a couple guys like, we just really want to lay low tonight, just drink some beer and not do a lot of math tonight. I could 100% seeing this being rolled out and everyone having a great time. Yeah, I don't know how the campaign building is yet, but just for a nice night, this is beautiful i'll also say that something that's interesting about the character sheet you know Mm -hmm. is there's no level you get your experience points the most experience points you can get is five that's Mm -hmm. if you do everything that's on the questionnaire yep you know trigger your weakness showed up uh fought a monster explored Mm -hmm. a strange new land or whatever um dealt with a problem not using combat yep and you know you might roll a couple nat ones, a couple nat twenties throughout the course of a session. So you're only going to be making. Edril rolled, I think, seven. Okay, well that's a lot. That and, and I think he barely advanced. Okay, <laughs> it was so bad. But <laughs> but also too, if you roll multiple nat twenties or nat ones on the same skill, it doesn't that's, matter. That's right. So if you keep using your that same is very skill, that's actually very true. You know, there's almost a point where it's like a you know if you uh, if you get a nat twenty in a skill, you're almost like I don't want to use that skill anymore because I'm I, I wasted the I don't want to hey, waste. You're gonna start nat- playing around with it. But anyways, long story short, you're going to be making maybe I don't know five six rolls advancement rolls seven advancement rolls per session and those aren't guaranteed to advance you that's and, a, that's what's interesting and you don't get a new heroic ability which is like you know like 
basically like a, a feat unless of power. the GM awards you and one. the GM could award one which is still diegetic which is yeah. great you know yeah. like if the, if the it group, gives you that like I yeah, really like felt if, like yeah a, like if the group goes into the ancient lost temple mm -hmm. and they train with the ancient warrior monks and then you go oh yeah everybody get a new heroic ability from this list and everyone goes cool I train with a monk and I learn this ability that's awesome totally awesome and that's great that that's in the game but the long the but the but the important part about it is just that the the game doesn't uh, it doesn't feel like it gets out of control quickly because even if you played it for a long time you know your skills might go up by a couple a, points a little bit a yeah. little bit you know and obviously some of your 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 shitty skills would go up faster but by and large it doesn't feel like you would like like you could play this game for 10 sessions and honestly at the end of 10 sessions your character might not look that different that's right than when you started that's 10 right. sessions ago i also like that um i don't know if i like so it for people like who it. like the zero to hero power fantasy probably a bad game it, it, it's gonna take a lot of grinding and and you have to be you have to be ready that um you might have three checks at the end of the game and i might have seven you advance them all and i advance one right which can be a little disheartening. Sure. I, I could see that. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. And it's tough. But I really feel like it has that reward system where, I don't know, you get to play out your character. You get to feel it out. You don't you don't advance a lot, but you get a little bit of incremental things. Yeah. Again, you, you, you sort of level out, not level up. Right, you level out, yeah. not up. Um, Isaiah asked about the experience. So, Isaiah, every skill mm -hmm. uh, in the game, it, whether it's a weapon skill or a normal skill, has a little box next to it. If during the course of the game, you roll a nat one or a nat 20 while using that skill, you mark the box. At the end of the session, you'll get between one to five experience points, and you will mark one to five boxes that have not already been ticked. Then once all of the boxes are ticked, the ones that you got from your experience points or the ones you got from rolling nat ones or nat 20s, you then roll a d20. If you roll higher than the skill, meaning as the skill gets higher, it becomes harder and less likely for you to advance, then it if you roll higher than it the number goes up by 1 if it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere yep yeah so you know you you could be stuck at 16 or 17 on your axe skill for, for a, long, a time. long time because you might go every session mark a box you know spend an experience point mark a box and then roll nope not 17 roll not 17 yep. not roll not 17 so it it could get frustrating which, which gets that a different feel which I don't know if everyone's ready for. And I just finally experienced this by playing Bowler's Gate the other day, where we talked about this. You talked about this. Like these new age people, they just, they don't get it. They just, they love, they get all this stuff for basically for free. Back in the day, you had to grind for these, you know, things. You might be like, I advanced this three times in a row and I couldn't get it. And fourth time you got it, you feel like you really earned it. And I always kind of like, yeah, that's, that's kind of garbage. And well, I played Bowler's Gate three the other day, a couple weeks ago. And you know, brother, had fought this same boss like six times in a row, and we kept dying every single time. And at the sixth or seventh time, we finally did it, and damn, did it feel good. <laughs> I was like, wow, I think this is what Derek was talking about. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it felt way more earned. earned. Yeah, I was like, we grinded for that guy. We had the stories that me and my brother were telling each other. Like, remember that, remember, remember that we failed that time? Oh, that one was sucked. But remember when we finally got it? I was like, and I sat back, and I, I remember just reminiscing, and I was like, yeah, I think that's what he was talking about. Yeah. So that, it has a weird feel. Don't know if I like it or not yet, but yeah. I feel like you do kind of get that, like, ah, I finally got that level 18 heroic, boys. Right. Like, well, and yeah. also it's one of those things where, you know, RPG players in particular have to be very common about this. Magic players have the same problem, where a lot of people evaluate only the ceiling. They never mm. evaluate the floor. So all they imagine is a world where everything works out, and they never think about And so what ends up happening is like they get really mad mm. because they're like, I put a point into my 17 skill every session for five sessions. Has it gone up? And it's like, maybe you shouldn't have been doing that. It could have been leveling something else up. You could up. have been leveling some one of your That's lower level point. skills up. You made a choice, and you're just mad because the odds that shouldn't have, you know, you, you getting the expected outcome, yeah. but everybody, everybody imagines when they buy a lottery ticket that they're going to win, <laughs> right? Like no one buys a lottery ticket thinking I'm going to lose, you know, I so, feel I, and, and, I buy lottery tickets, RPG, it's so hard. <laughs> our, our, our RPG players are very prone to like banking big. That's true. Like, they like to gamble hard. They, they like to get, like, I see this all the time. Oh, yeah. Like in Pathfinder two, I don't know why this is the more outrageous something is you need a 17. To, to even hit this guy, they roll, they miss. Hero point, I'm re-rolling. Why? You have <laughs> shit odds of doing this. We like, like it. Because you're like, well, of course, and then they get, oh, I can't believe I failed. Of course you failed. You're only 20% to hit this guy. 
You already missed, so the re-roll is still just 20%. I know. So, anyways. Um, and, 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 and we'll, we'll kind of um, we'll, we'll talk a little more about the system here, but I think we're, we're getting close to the end. Yep. So if anybody has any specific questions about this system, we'll, we'll answer those or anything maybe about uh, my game session last night, yep. which I ran for four players on the Patreon. Link below to join our Patreon, um, which gives you access to Discord, which um, lets you play in a lot of games, not just this one, but, you know, Hype Train. This one's the game right now. Um, but, yeah, we'll answer your questions uh, for the last however many Minutes we yeah, well, I mean, at this point we're about nine o'clock. Yeah. You know, um, and and we actually we have a hundred people in here, but wow, um, but uh, you know, obviously I didn't even know hundred people were interested in Dragon Bane. I, I know it's pretty crazy. But, Buy um, the box if you like. If you thought this was interesting, the box is a tremendous value. Yeah, um, you can get it off Amazon or from Free League. Um, and I really think if you have a casual group of of gamers at your house, literally like you just want to drink some beer, relax. This is a very nice system. That's yep. not five E, but it's it still uses a D twenty. Yep. So like people are like I know what a roll is. Like I get it. Um, the, they might have a lot of fun with this. And if you like the art, it's a really nice book too. Um, if you really really want a super crunchy system, this is probably not it. This is very much more relaxed. But um, at least what I've seen of the beginner box, it, yeah, I think I, it's a really good value. I mean, the entire rule book. I mean, it's right here. Is is <laughs> you know, it's not like it's it's not like it's two pages. No. Right, like like some of these super ultra light indie 100, games. hundred, but a lot of this at the end is just bestiary. <laughs> right, that's the bestiary too. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the, the core. Well, the set, another I mean, bestiary. We, we pretty also. much covered, you know, um, you know that. Um, Isaiah says, I still think uh, Fu is still the darling system of the Patreon. I agree. Uh, someone did say that in the in the Especially, Dragon Bane uh, chat. They were like, "Is this the new hot flavor of the month? Is it overtake Fu?" I said, "I don't think so because I think we're actually going to play Fu." Correct. Um, but like well, Dragon Bane's so. hot right at this second. Right. But that, I don't think it has the FU is just a really nice system. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, and FU I, is I, Fabula I, actually, Ultima. Actually, you know what? I don't think Fabula Ultima. Yeah, FU is Fabula Ultima. I don't yeah. think FU is a flavor of the month. I think it's just a good game. A great game that is going to stick around. Yeah. So you could argue that Fabula Ultima has sort of graduated from flavor oh, yeah, of the yeah. month to it's more like. It's not a fad. It's, it's not a fad anymore. Yeah. It's just part of a This could picture. totally be a fad. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, I I think. I, I, Every game has its advantages and its disadvantages. This is this game is no different. Yep. Um, and I could definitely see that a lot of things that Bob was talking about could potentially be a problem for certain people yep. and for certain instances. But like if I brought this over to our Friday nights with our group of casts, Rich and whatnot, Grover, they'd be like, I don't know if I could play this for multiple okay. sessions. But if we were doing Dungeon Time Extreme, they, but if we use Dragon Bane basically, it. Dragon Bane Extreme, yeah, I think it would have worked out just fine. I think so. You know, so. I absolutely think so. Yeah. Which was a lot of fun. Right. Um, but again, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of really, 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 there's a lot of really cool things. And again, uh, subtle things that I, I cannot, this game, little things like having to mark a condition and having to explain to the table and the GM why you're pushing a role and why the narrative situation and why you feel about something, that is going to very subtly create more role playing than you might ever, that you might be used to. Jackal, um, can he wants to know, can we get the Dragonborn creator into the Discord as well? Because we do have the Fabio Ultima uh, creator in our Discord right now. Yeah, Emmanuel joined the other um, the other day. Um, I mean, I could reach out to Thomas. <laughs> I have no contact with him at all. I should have Goblins because he's um, uh, Norwegian to, oh, yeah. to reach out to him first. Make, make, make the initial all which friend. I joked with him. Um, uh, uh, one of our fellow patrons uh, is going to run some Dragon Bane for the channel. But he goes, everyone's running this adventure. So he's like, I don't want to run this adventure because everyone's running it. But because he's Norwegian, he's got some third party uh, stuff that's only in, I think, I don't know what language, Swedish or something like that, that I is not translated. And he goes, I might run that. I'm like, ah, oh, you lucky SOB. <laughs> you got the good scoop with the good, because it, it, it's being produced over there. So he's got third party content that he might run for the channel. And I was got like, it. if you run that, you let me know. I'm going to jump in because I'm going to run, I would love to run Bob, some that's stuff. That's not that, how this is supposed to work. The patrons, the patron in running games for the patrons, not for us. Look, I can't run it. I can't translate it fast enough. He's gonna get it. So See, uh, I think it's awesome. You know, Bob, you're like one of those like you're like I'm not just the you know a president. I'm also the client. You know, like the hair club for men or whatever. Yeah, I mean, trust me. I the the, the patrons know if you if you guys are one of them, you you'll know too that I'm playing in these games too. Yeah, like I'm just like you guys. Right. You just yeah. want you want to you just want to get exposed and play a bunch of different. I just want to play. I just want to play and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I think I think we're gonna wrap up. So this, to, can anyone tell me the system is roll under, but is it roll low or blackjack? I don't know what blackjack is, but it's definitely roll low. Yeah, it's definitely roll low. What's blackjack? I don't know. I don't know what blackjack is. Trying to get twenty one, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's definitely roll low, and it's very intuitive. It tells you, here's your skill. 
roll under that skill or equal to right equal, equal or, or under, under. Yeah. and you're and you just automatically su- you you succeed and then it will t- you roll the dice or whatever you get boons and bane for disadvantage and advantage and, that's, and basically- that's like that is like the system right. and the only other thing you got to really know is that the initial system is card based and when you do damage it armor reduction unless something tells you differently that's mm-hmm. really pretty i mean like i told you GM Scott had a, had a bullet point list and it was like 10 bullet points. And like, these are the bullet points you can, you could literally just read these at the start of your session. It was like 10 of them. And your, your party, if they played any D20, would be like, I'm, I'm on board. Oh, I see. Uh, blackjack being roll under, but high. Well, no, as far oh. as I can tell, there is no uh, benefit Mm-mm. for rolling lower under your stat. Like if, if your stat is a 15, Rolling a 15 is the same as rolling a 2. So the only only thing I've seen is um, critical hits lets you do some different things. And that's if you roll a nat 1. If you roll a nat 1, you could do either double damage, not the like additional modifier roll, which is like the D4 sometimes. Bypass their armor. You can like bypass their armor or you can get like an additional attack. Yeah. So there's like, this is actually kind of cool because, again, it gives you choices that you can make. A lot of times you just want double damage. Sure. But if you if if you didn't, there's options for that too. Yeah. So there, there are there are things like that. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, no, it's not even... So, yeah. But any case... Um, yeah, roll low, for sure. It's definitely roll low. So, again... Which I, takes I, some getting used to. <laughs> I, I think it's really cool. I, I think the, the premium foundry module is definitely worth oh, checking out. It's so beautiful. Nice. <laughs> great art. I mean, we got it set up, Bob, and it, it, it looked great before. I, I oh, yeah. Um, you know, sounds like our patrons who played with you last night had a great experience and a great time. And, Bob, you're going to be running... Uh, more of these, and these are part of our premium games for some of our higher yes. tier members. But you know, our community games are run by our patron members, and those are free and open to yep. everybody who's a member of our Patreon. Even if you're just, uh, you know, a three dollar or yep. five dollar member, um, some of the games when Bob runs or if I run them, uh, they they we it's a little bit more limited exclusive access. You need to be one of our higher tier people and pay some of our from our tickets um, in order to access that. But Bob, you're going to be running this every two weeks for the for foreseeable an, future until it's done. Until it's done, um, yeah. So which can if it if if Probably like, out until summer or something like that. Yeah, you know? and if if like um if the desire, the hype sort of dies out, then like I said, what's really nice about this exact um, uh, adventure is that I can kind of wrap it up quickly. Okay, the things you need are in the next few sites, and then we're kind of done. Or I can you know push it out. It really depends on how popular it is and how people like it. I had of my four players uh, last night, three of them had already signed up for session two. Um, and the fourth one, Enders, who was in the chat, uh, he just had to double check his schedule. And actually, you you would appreciate this, Derek. Um, uh, he didn't have enough tickets, but uh, one of our patrons was like, "I got you. <laughs> if, if your schedule clears up, I got you." Oh, right, because he spent his fifty to he get spent into the his, one, yeah, but he spent, then he he doesn't yeah. have enough tickets to get into the second one. Yeah, and someone, but one of our very nice, someone patrons, fronted him. I, I've some of the people on our Patreon, like some of the nicest people I've had. Like they're so nice and charitable. Yeah, there was a guy who was going to be visiting the states and wanted to get a shirt. Um, and obviously the shirts are you know, a fair number of tickets and like a bunch of people just like, here's a gold, here's a yeah. gold, here's a gold. And then it was like, oh, cool. I can get a shirt now. Yeah. Yeah. The, some like, of the nicest people. And, and what's funny is gritty. they're like, they're just encouraging this other player to game more. Like that's what they're really doing. He's sure. like, I would love to game. Would love you to game more here. Right. Game more. Because as the community grows, the more games we all get to play, the more different right. systems we can all enjoy. Actually, there's probably too many systems. We don't even have enough time. That is actually <laughs> probably true. That's more of a problem. But, um, but yeah, uh, so somebody asked a question. Says that, uh, Isaiah said, did opposed roles get discussed? Yes. Oh. I hit the wrong button. We are starting again. I hit the wrong button. Uh, what is going on? I don't know. What is going on? All right, here we there go. There we are. Sorry. It's the end of the night, folks. Things are getting messy. Um, uh, opposed roles, you just each roll under and whoever rolls lowest with... Uh, while also rolling under their skill yep. wins. Yep, 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 right? yep, yep. So, so that's the only time that you would compare your number. So if 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 you and I were doing an opposed roll and you rolled a six, which was under your skill, and I rolled a four, which was under my skill, then I won. Correct. But if a I lot rolled, of it is like awareness versus sneaking. Yeah. So did did your sneak check opposed to their awareness roll? Yeah. Did that work out? And then did they did they notice you basically? Correct. Though I did bring it up yesterday when two players were in the bar. One kind of wanted to have a little tussle with some uh, some players or some NPCs. Wait, does that mean a fight or sex? Uh, he was a duck. No, uh, <laughs> uh, it was uh, some ruffians. So he was gonna throw him out of the bar, and he had no problems doing this at first. But the other uh, the other PC was like, I don't know if we really should. We just got into town, and he kind of was like, I don't know. I was like, if you guys want, I'll let you both oppose roles against each other, and then that's the narrative. 
<laughs> like, awesome. I also was a PBTA in there. I yeah. was like, yeah, I was like, we, That's and, great. They, and they were both like, we could. And then, but the, <laughs> the, the, the Frosty was playing the duck was like, we, the, the guard did say if we start any trouble, he's going to kick us out of town. So I don't know if we should be the first second in town, like throwing people out of the bar. Like. I mean, I would argue, <laughs> be like, I'd be looking at the sheet and be like, you're foolhardy. You want that experience point? You want that experience well, point? Well, it's funny. He that's that's the one experience point he didn't get. He didn't get that one. That he didn't get it because he never really did that. Yeah. That's so, whole session. So see if he had been like, eh, I'm gonna start trouble anyways. I don't care about the guards. You're like foolhardy. That's awesome. Check. Check. Check box. <laughs> um, people are like, oh, that was. A you know, it's funny that that happened. I because there's it's winter time. We get a lot of static in here. Mm -hmm. And when I touched the stream deck, it shocked it. Oh, and you know it's USB. It's plugged right into the computer, and so the electrical jolt is what made it go to that screen. That's funny. <laughs> so that was That's actually funny. just literally, wow. literally static disruption. Um, all right, folks. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up there. I think we've yeah. kind of pretty much covered the system. I mean, I if you know. have any other questions, yeah. obviously, uh, I hope that you're a member of the Patreon. In which case, you can just ask me or anyone else. There's a lot of people that are even better at this than me. I mean, I barely touch the surface of this game. And there's people that I'm running multiple, multiple sessions already. We have a great channel already set up in our Patreon Discord that is already talking about the rules, and there's an FAQ and everything that we can go over. Um, if not, obviously try to leave a comment below, and yeah, we'll do the best we can to get to it. You know, right. it's I mean, busy, we're not but, a, listen. We're yeah. not Dragon Bane experts. We're new to the game. We've really just started playing in the last you know couple of weeks. I've done two sessions, and <laughs> you know, but it it definitely has earned a spot um, in 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 its niche. Yes, and I think it does it really well. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I I felt like you were much more comfortable running me the game. Well, I actually I feel like I could GM right. Because you know? a lot of times I feel like I'm a computer. Yeah. No. Because my my bandwidth is too. I, I can't even. I can't even. I can't even describe the space that we're going into because I'm just too focused on all the rules. Right. Yesterday I, I was even talking about the tunnel description and the chains dangling from something in the distance, and they were like, "Okay, yeah, okay." No, I, I noticed. I have more we, flexibility to do that yeah. when I'm not overwhelmed with rules and and something. When you ran the game for us, I thought you felt much more comfortable, much more at peace. Even little things like I don't have to decide what this monster does. I'm going to roll a d6. That's right. And the game will say, oh, the monster actually uh, gives a terrifying a howl and everybody make a check or you become scared. And you That's a great point, actually. <laughs> that I, I actually think that's an underestimated point that people don't realize that when you're running these, the NPCs are pretty dang easy. But the monsters, a lot of times, you are you have to figure out what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do next? Well, this kind of takes that away from you. Now, again, it actually says in there, I think you can decide what to do on a lot of these random encounter tables. And I, I don't I don't know exactly, but it might doesn't, say you it could, doesn't force you to roll randomly. I think it I but. don't think it is. The only thing the only rule is you can't do the same attack twice. So it's like a D6 chart. But I'm like, yeah, there's a little D6. That's what happens. All right. I think I hopped over a player yesterday and stabbed him. I was like, that's just what happens. That's what the monster does. And and it takes a little bit off me, which let me actually be a better GM. You know, I, I I'm still new and I'm still I can't handle as much bandwidth as Derek can. So if there's a little bit that helps, I think that was a lot of bit that helps. <laughs> yeah. And again, I, it, it seems silly, but when you're playing a game like fifth edition D and D and you get a really complicated monster stat block, God forbid a spell caster. I don't even want to look at the stat box. If you have two uh, spell casters. When you look at a pathfinder two care and it you're like, me. you're like, wow, there's like, there's like a, there's seven different resistances, weaknesses here, skills, feet, uh, uh, certain abilities, uh, reactions, free actions. Um, there's three or four different multiple, you know, strike, uh, the, another strike, a different type of attack, a breath weapon, a thing, a two yeah. thing. And then each turn, you have to make a decision. How am yeah. I going to spend that monster's three actions to do the tactical thing or the role-playing thing? And a lot of times because of the nature of the game, you end up doing the tactical thing and ignoring the description, yeah. ignoring the now again, If you wanted to, you could pick the right one that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Or you can let it ride right. and just focus on what's his armor, what's his HP. That's really what I care about. And yeah. how and how am I basically attacking these PCs? Yeah, so I, I again, I, I think it's an underrated, actual nice little piece of tech. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually think about how much probably that took off me yeah. until you said that because I've ran... I've ran monsters where um, random encounter, table, boom, that's the monster that shows up. Now I have to go look up that monster and I have to read all of its stats, figure out all of its abilities. How am I supposed to play this yeah. monster right? No, 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 this is it. This monster is the one showed up. It's got D6 attacks. Now, I would never, I don't know how they structured it. Okay. But this is how I would build that. What? The monster? This is how I would build that table. The random encounter table? Nope. Oh, the D6 table. The monster attack table. Monster attack table. Which is a D6. It's a D6. My monster, the way I would design a monster attack, obviously it would be different for every monster, mm -hmm. but I would make it so that the one result 
was, if you think about empowered by the apocalypse terms, one would be like the softest move. Okay. Two and three and four would be worse. Five would be even worse. And six would be the worst. Okay. In terms of the most scary. And that I would allow different things that the monster did or the PCs do to apply a bonus or a penalty oh. to the next D6 roll. To move it down a little bit. So that or to move like, it up a little bit. And mm-hmm. I might put something on the table that is a seven. Like a miss or something? No, or? like a seven on the table of the D6, yeah. which means if you roll a six, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. You have to have the, the, the bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like imagine if like that's you're, interesting. You had a, like a, a red dragon, and one of the on the roll of a two or mm-hmm. something, it says the dragon spends the round gathering in all of its mighty breath, and that's all it does. Or and then maybe it like scares people, or there's an inrush of yeah, air. It, like could knock, it could knock them prone or something like that. But then it says, but the next attack roll when you roll the d6 add plus two, and now you could potentially get. The seven result mm. or the eight result, which is mega inferno or something like that. I know? mean, yeah, on on the dragon, uh, the number six is the dragon breath, the fire breath. Right. So maybe so. they did do that. Again, I don't know the monsters because yeah. I haven't I haven't run the game. I've only played it. Um, but I like the idea of having that. Um, uh, 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 Boothby says one lowest severity to six highest severities. How monsters work in Alien uh, also pro- freely. That's probably right. So that's probably right. That's probably what they did here. Um, and I like. I actually like Crucible Gaming. It says could use Boon Bane on the D6 as well. It doesn't have to just be a D20. So like Dang, the monsters true. attack could have Bane. So like maybe the PCs do something cool to like disrupt the monster. Oh, you know, like yeah, and they roll two D6 and take low and take the low. So they're not going to do as bad of an attack. That's a, at Crucible. That's a really good idea. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm sold in. That's so cool. I like, I like that, idea. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. Wow. So and again. Hmm. It, if it follows that rough pattern that one is the least. I mean, so. I mean, they're all bad. Let's yeah, so, <laughs> so number one here is Dragon Roar. The dragon opens his mouth and lets out a chilling roar. All characters within 20 meters suffer a fear attack with a bane on their will roll. So, so the, the the first result, the one on the dragon is. No he damage. Just, he just bellows. It doesn't mm-hmm. do damage. It might scare them or, or fear yep. them a little bit. But and the six. Number six is the dragon towers over the player characters in all of its splendor before unleashing a devastating storm of fire from its mouth. The fire forms a cone that is 10 meters long and whose width at any given point equals the distance from the dragon's mouth. Any player characters hit by the flames suffers 3d10 damage. Armor has no effect. Woo. And remember, this isn't. Uh, the regular NPC, you have to roll a, a, a lower than your attack. There's no right? attack. There's here. no they, attack. They you just, just take, do 3d10 damage. You just do 3d10 damage. And Macander of Half Bay has 15 hit points. That's right. And this doesn't ignores armor. That's right. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, and he's uh, he's a beast. He's got ferocity three, which means he has three initiatives. Yeah. <laughs> Boothby says uh, Rick Rick S uh, died to a, a six roll from a xenomorph when they were playing in their <laughs> alien game. Um, no, 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 Henry. I'm not saying that fear doesn't do nothing. Oh yeah, fear, yeah. fear no, is fear is no joke. No, fear is. And that's why I said I said they're all bad. Yeah, yeah. But you want to pass that wisdom. Clearly, save. clearly <laughs> the fear roll. Will save. The, clearly the fear roll is a lot worse than take 3d10 damage, Correct. no check whatsoever, ignore armor. Yeah, right. That's going to kill. There's people. something on the fear roll. I think it's shaken, if I'm not mistaken. That like. All your party then has a condition. Like it's a, that's a, that's a big issue. No, no. I, again, I, I I like that. There's nothing that you know. It, the, the fear roll could still absolutely be a bad oh, thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. just saying that in general, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fear isn't fear's bad, and it could really fuck you up. <laughs> but it's not 3d10 AOE <laughs> armor ignoring damage. Yeah. I mean that's gonna that could literally kill every single person in the party. So yeah, the that's dragon. Awesome. A dragon is. In this game, like dragons are the pinnacle and demons are the pinnacle. Like they are the polar opposites and they are the the beasts. They're the beasts. They're the biggest and baddest ones. <laughs> um no, no, Isaiah says um ba- boon bait on the enemy action roll is cool sounding, but it have to be hard to do. Otherwise, it seems like too optimal an action to do that every round someone would try to apply that. No, no and Isaiah, I, yeah. I would never say that you should make it like an action that the party can do it's like a disarm. It's it's just something that happens in the narrative, you know? And like it allows you to sort of reward <laughs> it gives you another lever for when the players do creative thing. Like imagine if you know you were um fighting this dragon, but you're in sort of like a twisting hallways and the players are like we're, we're, we're going to lead it into an area where the you know the rock is more enclosed mm-hmm. and the creature you know and then you get in there and you're like okay cool he's going to roll with a bane and he gets a one because he's stuck and he can't, he can't breathe fire, fire. Yeah. he just screams in anger and roaring and it like fear. makes sense yeah it just makes more sense I, I don't think you should set it up as like a an action that the party can immediately so, do. So uh, Crucible also said that there's a severe injury table. They do have that. It's an optional thing, but oh, they do have. Oh yeah, they do have that where like you can have a broken nose. 
and then you get Bane on all awareness rolls. Healing time is D6 days. Like, they really kind of have that some... That sounds very similar to Forbidden Lance. Well, that's, I think, what he was even saying. Uh, Book of... Oh, yeah, I think I think up ahead, he did say, like, Forbidden Lance is something similar. I think it's a free league thing. Yeah, I mean, my mm-hmm. guess is it's free league thing, but yeah. also, I mean, I, I'm getting the sense that, like, you know, Forbidden Lands is clearly the year zero engine, right? It uses a, a pool yes. of D6s, and you have your your attribute dice, your skill dice, your gear dice, and Banes. When you roll a one, you potentially could take attribute damage from your roll if you push. This game is not that, but there's a lot of similarities. Correct. And I could easily see, I, I found the game very easy to pick up because I'm so familiar with Forbidden Lands oh, yeah. and the year zero engine. So I could easily see these sort of cross-pollinating um, yeah. each other. I, the only thing I wish this thing had was some kind of... um. Uh, what do you call them for Ben Lance? Your stronghold. Oh no, stronghold. Rules. Yeah, it's because it's. I think it's just too. It's too, not crunchy. Yeah, strong, I, but stronghold. I love stronghold. Stronghold. Str- I mean, when you get to the stronghold, I mean, you're an architect, but you get to I the know. Strong, do you see in the back where it's like this? Is how many units of wood it takes, and how many units of stone it takes? That, and, that's a little more crunch in this game. I think <laughs> wanting to have, but I'm like, could they just like fit like a small version into here? <laughs> like, um, and I think someone up, up ahead, up, up above, said. Um, um, the best year he does have some more kin. It's on pre-order right now for the hardcore, but you do get the PDF right away if you do order it. Yeah, that's what's from Amagi. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, oh, you think you're an Adam is splat, Ryan? That'd be really nice. But yeah, ultimately, <laughs> Crucible. I, I agree with you. Where you, when when Crucible said it leans heavily into the rulings, not rules mindset. There's just not that many rules. Crucible and, just nailing it tonight. Yeah, in, Crucible. In the chat. Doing, yeah, Crucible doing a great job. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously. Yeah, strongholds do feel like an thisness and. Antithesis to of, beer, and of beer and pretzels. I agree, and that's yeah. why I don't think it's right. in here. But right. I can see it. Space mortgages. I'm not know, saying that I strongholds know. are space mortgages, but it's it's getting close to space I'm just mortgage. Saying, I don't know how much. I don't. Again, I don't uh, pay enough. The, the keeps flooding again. Uh, the sump pumps out. And, I know. Uh, we gotta, I know. We got to deal with the. We, gotta, we need to put a new roof on. I don't even need all that. <laughs> but can I just say, like, I buy a castle and now I have an army. Like, like, give me simple things. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't know. Okay. R- Ryan I says it know. could be like Vason's base rules, which is less detailed but uses a way to get buffs. I could see that. You I'm know. just saying give me something to have some fun with the extra gold yeah, I, I mean also who knows maybe they'll come up with expansion books and I, he, some... someone said he thinks they're gonna have a splat book yeah so I, Ryan said that and I think that's great um, <laughs> so Ouija board also comparing Vason Ouija board says Vason is a very cool monster attack table system that is less about chance rolls and based on the monster's hit points and fight progression so, so that's like, another free league thing with a great art and I love it yeah but like I like the idea I played that too you played Vason yeah oh when did you play Vason uh, there's a couple from the um, Patreon back in the day that they've left. And you they, didn't run it. So no, I didn't run it. I played play play in, in it. it. Yeah, sorry. I play with you guys as well as GM you guys. But again, the art and the games, I'm free league. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I'm free it, league it, uh, uh, Gurney <laughs> says Vason was illustrated by the same guy who did Dragon That's Man. probably why I like it. Yeah. The Vason artwork is so good. Yeah. Oh, so good. Very, very good. All right. Uh, well, that, 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 Johan so Egerkans. That's my. Franz. That's probably my favorite artist right now. Then, oh, yeah. easily my favorite artist. Yeah, you you have been really. Um, you bought, you bought, and read physical books. Yes. Forbidden Lands. Did it. Then you bought, read, and ran Dragon, Dragon Bane. Bane. I'm a new. This is this is new Bob. 2024. A different person. So you're really you're digging the free, and you loved Symbarum. I'm I'm buying books Vason. that you guys own, which is a weird thing for me. <laughs> you're buying books we don't own. Step it up, guys. If you don't, I don't know why you don't own this yet. <laughs> uh, you well, probably just wait for the hardcovers to come out. Technically, and, yeah. I own the Foundry VTT module now because <laughs> I had to buy it for our. True. I had to buy it for which our. Which is all the core rules in yeah. it. <laughs> uh, the next, I, I'm sure at Origins or something like that, actually, you'll be able to buy. Actually, it. I just got the bills from all the server licenses renewing you know they're, oh. on, they're on the annual membership <laughs> we, have a lot, we have a lot of servers <laughs> yeah we have so anyways um, yeah the art is money yeah the art's great um so yeah uh, so you're really digging free league so i'm, I'm curious free, Bob, weird what, i don't know why what is I it am, no no let's i think it's the art let's finish with that what it what is it the art? I, I think number one is the art i mean that's why i looked at some some barium some barium some barium that's a uh, vason was I don't think that's why I um, jumped in that game. Someone else was just running it. I wanted to try something different. But when I played it, I was like, this art is invocative and something way different. Samarum is because of the art. Forbidden Lands was not because of the art, because we were going to run it. And then I was like, this art is amazing. And Free League has this interesting system. And then I'm like, I really am just playing all these weird, or reading all these Free League things. Um, so then I I bought Dragon Bane, and I was like, this art is really, really, really up my alley. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. And obviously, Jim Scott had a heavy, heavy influence in that by by telling me it was beer and pretzels. Yeah. And then they have um, they just came out with a new one, Electric State, uh, on Kickstarter. Um, free league. Free league. Yeah, look it up. It's like uh, post apocalyptic, oh. but like 
like the apocalypse happened. I think like the 1990s. I think it is. It's got like a giant. Uh, the uh, Electric State. Yeah. All right. Uh, a road trip on the verge of reality in visual artist and author Simon Stallenhog's vision of an apocalyptic alternate 1990s. Yeah. So this feels more like. So I got tales. that. This feels more I like. I bought the, that too, Derek. You did. I got hooked. <laughs> Forbidden Lands got me good. The art. You know, the, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> the channel starts making a little bit of money. You start getting some checks this year, this past year, and suddenly, look at you, you're just buying up all the RPG games. So, I don't know, man. The free leagues got me good. They got me. They got me so good right now. Yeah, but I, I definitely get very. I mean, like I could just have this book on my shelf and just look at the art because it's so good. Yeah. Like I love art books. Oh, uh, Ryan's got me. He said the artist. I think Ryan's the one that made me, not made me. I should say made me is the wrong word. I think Ryan might have been the one that told me about Electric State. Someone yeah. told me about Electric yeah. State, and I kind of definitely got has it. Tales from the Loop vibes for sure. Yeah, and it yeah looked, I think it's Ryan. He's smiling at me. And uh, <laughs> it does say here it was written by Niels Heinz or Heinz, which is who who wrote Tales from the Loop. Okay, so. but in collaboration with the Free League's core team and based on Free League's award winning Year Zero engine. There we go. Um, you know, I'm curious. I, I got that one just for the art. I have no idea if it's gonna be good. Um, I'm curious. I have anybody, the alpha PDF if you want to run it. Has anybody <laughs> actually played or run Mutant Year Zero? Because that's like that was the first game that they did, which is why oh, it's really? called the Year Zero engine. Oh, no. So Mutant Year Zero is kind of like a Fallout post apocalypse. Someone in our channels had to run it. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I actually I've never read it. I've never I don't own it. Um but I, I do like I do like the Year Zero engine for sure. Um anyways. I do. Yeah, cool stuff. Um Oh, so he's I, I, impressed. I guess uh, Gurney was like, "The books are incredible." I did it like Bob and just bought three to four free league books last month. I, I, I don't know why, but just they're so easy to get. Yeah. And and I don't know, their value seems to be incredible. Forbidden Lands box set yeah, and game. the Dragon Man box set just seem like steals. Like, yeah. I don't. I mean, trust me, guys. I don't like spending money. <laughs> I feel like that was easy buy, like an easy pull the trigger. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, for for fifty bucks. You know, a lot. Of, I mean, a hardcover from some of these people now is seventy dollars just yeah. for the rule book. This is fifty dollars. You're getting a complete game plus additional benefits, plus additional bonuses, plus maps, plus stick. It, it, it's a really good deal. Look, if they come up with an art book for this game, I'd probably buy that too. I almost bought the Vasin art book, uh, not from uh, Vasin itself, but the uh, but bought, that author's. Uh, artwork. Last year, the Legend of the Five Rings came out with an art book, oh, and I bought that. So good. I, I love, also I love art. I don't know if you saw that, but I, I bought buy. I bought a couple prints. I saw and uh, from. D and D artist, and the first one came in as it looks. Oh, it looks so do you have it framed up? I, no, I'm gonna have to. No, I'm gonna have to take it out to get it framed. You gonna get it professionally framed? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I don't. I mean, in oh, theory, I could make hot. a frame, but like getting it professionally no, framed no, is like the way to go. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, it looks really great. There's Sign, some it, signed by oh, Elmore, signed by that's E3. So nice. It's very cool. I do have some art from like um, when I used to go to like Comic Con type places, and I've had some artists give me art and like sign it and stuff. Like that. It's, yeah, it's it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> and when I was in. Um, Vegas last year during uh, one of the Magic Fests. Oh, someone did play. Uh, Jackal Moon said they played the Mutant Zero Engine video. Okay. Oh, video game. Never oh, mind. I lied. Ah, I tricked me at the end there. But I bought. Um, I started buying some Magic art too. And Who's your favorite Magic artist? Um, that's my 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 the correct. I like, I like Raymond Swanland. The correct answer. It's digital artist though. Yeah, is probably Rebecca Guai. Is that the one that did all the like the the misty looking? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's very watercolory. Matt the cat likes her a lot. Yeah, does he? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that, but like, um, but yeah, Rebecca Guai was for me for a long, long time my favorite artist. I feel like there's a four a uh, green card that she did that it was really famous. It's like everything in hers like feels like it's Ga Gaia's mist or yeah, something. It's, it's like very Gaia's ethereal yeah. and very you know. Um, she's, she's she's well, she's a good artist. Yeah, but um, Raymond Swanland's more like a a very like harsh, rough edged uh, um, virtual arts, like very like um, I think he does like a lot of like Star Wars stuff and and whatnot. So. Um, but yeah, so uh, anyways, Wait, L five R L book. I have to look that up. Oh, you might yeah. have got coats. <laughs> yeah, coats, coats got you. Yeah, so it came out last year at Gen Con, but it sold out. I couldn't buy it, so I had to I had to pre order it when they did a reprint, and it came out. It's a beautiful book, just absolutely stunning. I love the art from Fledge of the Five Rings, and again, I think art is uh, awesome. I mean, I have a Starcraft art book at my house, like just with the art of Starcraft. Back, I bought it before I even met with like probably fifteen years ago, and I, I just like art books a lot. If I like the art, yeah. I buy the art books. No, art's I great. really like just perusing through art i agree it's very nice and freely just they, they they i don't know what they're doing but they're they're not going well, out of the park you heard it here from bob oh. folks so all right guy everyone thank you so much uh for hanging out with us tonight thank you save versus and gm scott for throwing us a little bit of money uh, it that's looks right. like uh they don't love you bob but they do like they think we're okay the other nights um, that's right you know obviously you know we again 
you know, we do shows and we always have strip tip goals and stream goals and it's awesome and it's great when people throw some money our way. We love it. It's very appreciative. But at the end of the day, the reason why we can do a show like this and talk about Dragon Bane yeah. is because of our Patreon. That's right. And so the best way that if you want to support us and get a little bit of benefit for yourself in the form of, you know, being able to play games and access to channels and get access to, um, um, you know, uh, PDF and merch. Yeah. Are and you all playing some obscure RPG? Right. So we were, we're know, probably playing it too. This is a great <laughs> way. You know, again, huge thanks to GM Scott for Safe mm -hmm. Versus for coming in and supporting us. But just again, thank you so much to our patrons. They allow us to do shows like this where we don't have to chase the algorithm and I don't have to do another video about some Wizards of the Coast drama or something like that. Yeah. I don't, in fact, I've never done a Wizards of the Coast drama video because I have a Patreon and because that supports us and, and enables the, us to make a little bit of money. So, mm -hmm. so anyways, uh, thanks everybody. Thanks, Bob, for running the game for me over the break. That's right. Over the holidays. Thanks, Bob, for running the game for the patrons. And and you've got more coming up. So, and I'm well, sure you're only going to feel yeah. more, more, you know, oh, uh, Henry. Oh, what did we get? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. I love you too. <laughs> Henry had to swoop in and, and make it so that Bob Bob's super chat beat beat the uh, the other knights are okay. Henry, thank you so much. Henry is a uh, um, uh, a fantastic patron and a wonderful friend. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, just as an FYI for some people, I have some questions coming up. The knights are going to be at. A planning to be at Origins Game Fair well, again there. this year. Um, that's gonna, a hotel this That's going to be in Columbus. Uh, I think it's in June. It's um, like right, right at the end of June? Yes. It's Or is it July? Uh, it's, before, it's before Gen Con. Yo, yeah, it's always yeah. June. June 19th. Yeah, okay. So uh, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio for Origins Game Fair, June 19th through the 23rd. Yep. Um, I am going to be at Gen Con. Yep, I will not be there. Uh, in August. Uh, and so – and and. We, a lot of times we have our patrons come by and all other stuff. So I may do another yeah, plan it now. <laughs> yeah. I may do another con. And of course we are here at night at night to last call. We are trying to get together um, an organization and organize our own convention for night con. Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, that detail still to be determined. We're hoping to do it at the end of this year. Yes. Uh, maybe sometime in the fall, but it really comes down to, can we find a place that we can afford? Cause you know, yeah. we're not, we're not such a huge channel, you know? Um, but if I can figure out a way to maybe squeeze in another con this year, That'd be sweet. Um, I might do that. But but if we run our own con, you know that'll probably that'll probably take yeah. the cake. But if we don't, then if it has to get pushed till next year or something like that, because we just can't find a place to do it, because you know, we're trying. It needs to be affordable. I'm not gonna. I'll I'll lose. I'll lose some money. I'll lose hundreds of dollars on running a convention. I won't lose thousands of dollars. There's a line. Uh, uh, there's a line. <laughs> I don't know where that line is. That line is probably farther than I want to admit in the sense that I will probably like, well, so, so you're saying you won't lose a thousand. No, I'd lose a thousand. I'm yeah. just saying I won't lose many thousands of dollars. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully we're going to be put in this. Matt says a small Kickstarter for that. No, you know, Matt, I, I, I don't Kickstarter. I don't, I've never done a Kickstarter. It just seems like the wrong way to do it. I feel like for me, if I can't get 30 to 50 people, from my community who aren't interested in driving in, flying in and, and paying maybe a couple hundred and bucks. You're not you going to know, get hundreds. <laughs> I, then I'm not going to get hundreds. And also too, you know, I need to keep it small. I want to be realistic about the logistics of it. Yeah. You know, we've never run a convention like this. And if I'm going to do a convention, Bob, I want to do it right. You know, I want people to have badges and I want people oh, yeah. to have, you know, shirts and swag I want bags. To, swag bags. Like I want it to feel like a really cool moment, you know, but Matt, you're absolutely correct. I have seen people do that before oh, and it's very, Sean. you know, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a very successful way of doing it. And I do think it, it can be great. Um, Hey, Sean coming in with their 20th super chat. By Sean, the way. I'll, I'll see you at the Hofbrau house. <laughs> I'll be at Origins again for sure. Hey, Sean, maybe you could show up on time this time and actually play nope. as a Sean's main character. Sean's too busy drinking. As a main character. And maybe Sean. Yeah, I want to play with Sean, Sean, not as like the NPC yeah. on the outside. And maybe Sean, maybe I won't be passed out drunk in the <laughs> hotel room and you can actually get to play with me. <laughs> you got, I mean, he didn't get to play Avatar either. He was on no, the outside looking in. He didn't in. get to play Avatar either. Um. So, anyway, but he did get us that he gave us that bottle over there. One of those bottles is from him. Yeah, from Sean from yeah. Origins. And, and Sean also cleaned up in the Oath game, right? Didn't he get? Um, didn't he get free dice from? He got like his meal pick. Well, well no, but didn't ever. he get? He got like a he, free he, dice. He got, from, premium, he got the premium dice vault from Roll for Combat. Oh yeah, for agreeing to betray us. Oh, uh, it was a but wild then thing. He re betrayed him by agreeing for us to pay for his. Yeah, because Smith was going to pay for his dinner. Yeah. Yeah, Sean was a. Uh, Sean was playing both sides. <laughs> Yeah, he was the real winner. He was the real winner. Yeah, I was just like, he's kind of like, yeah, kind of a 
floozy. Kind of like, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like. <laughs> yes, he was definitely playing both sides. So, all right, well. But with, you can have that fun too if you guys meet us out of um, Origins too. With, <laughs> with that super chat, Bob's tip goal is complete. Woo! Mine is not. So, Bob, you are the winner. They love you. We're, we're not even okay. Um, and that's totally fine with me. So, thank you so much. And thanks everybody for coming by and stopping by. If you're watching this on the VOD, you know, leave a comment yep. or, or something. We'll try to answer it. Or join it. the Patreon and, and join us. Yeah. And of and course, we'll talk to us. <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. We go live Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we also sometimes go live Sundays. Um, sometimes pay attention, Saturday. ring the bell. Yeah, pay, mm-hmm. ring the bell if you want to get the notification because we don't do a whole lot of videos. We mostly just do live streams. Yeah, these people, days. people think we're just not, we don't exist. Yes. But you got to click that live button. You got to click the live stream <laughs> button. That being said, maybe there's a world where eventually uh, we can you know, start doing more video content again. But we do love communicating and talking with you all like we have to this evening. So the problem is, Derek, you part- spend too much time on the Discord. That's true. So people that like people don't know this maybe, but if you join the Patreon and the Discord, you, you Derek's like on there talking games all the time. Yeah, too much. Maybe if you weren't, you oh, I see. A, yeah. it would be more. Ex- I'd have more. You'd time. have more videos. Yes. But instead, well, you're spending time with the people that are uh, my, join our community. Yeah, yeah. Here's my here's my here's my exact thought process. Okay, there's tens of thousands of people out yes. in the commu- in the world that I could be making a video for, who aren't giving me any money or just don't and care. And then I have people. A small group of a couple hundred people who are willing to give me three, five, ten, twenty-five, twenty-five, a hundred dollars a month. Who I only have so many hours I can put into this channel a week. I have a full-time job. I have dogs. I have a house to manage. I have hobbies to maintain. Mm-hmm. Social life in theory that I would like to one day get back to. So if I only have so many hours to put into a channel each week, where do I want to put that focus and tension on the people who are already supporting me, who have already given me which money? to me means they care. Yeah, I, I would rather keep my current group of community, you know, well fed, mm-hmm. you know, and, and well supported and have those conversations with me and be I mean, available. You guys get in deep sometimes. Yeah, so. no, obviously. I can't and, even follow you sometimes. I'm like, man, mean, you guys are getting in the I mean, nitty gritty. Fair, to be fair, I mean, you know, I we, ha- we have and a, cookies. I, I, Booth B told me that you have cookies I or do, something. I do. And I don't have them. Okay. You know why you don't have them? Why? Well, because I didn't bring them last uh-huh. Tuesday. And because we didn't get together we for like a, last m- Friday. a month. I said I didn't. I forgot them. <laughs> Booth he's like, did Derek give you the cookies? I'm like, what cookies? He goes, oh, that son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna, I was going to bring them today. But then Smith said he wasn't going to be here because he wasn't sick. And so then I was like, okay, well, then you Boothie, know. this is what I have. I don't, I don't get cookies because yeah. he's hoarding that them. Being said, They're probably Boothie, gone. One jar of the bruiseberry is already gone. <laughs> Because I definitely ate that one bag of the blueberry blueberry cookies of the I don't know if they're blueberries and cranberries or if it's just blueberries those are gone. We love crumbs. What do we get? And we and I <laughs> ate one of the I think the big I don't know if they were chocolate chip or like chocolate chip butterscotch. It was hard for me to tell, but one of those is gone as well. So yeah, we're getting, but they can we, have they can have more. We're they getting have, crumbs, Boothby. We're getting crumbs. You're not you're, you're getting more than crumbs. Listen, <laughs> look. Look, I'm I'm losing weight. I can't I can't indulge. I'm gaining like, weight right now. Oh, I'm down since I hurt my elbow. I, I can't went, lift this heavy. I went to Vegas at the beginning of December, so uh, December seventh or something like that. So about a month ago, I'm down twenty pounds since then. Heck yeah! Yeah. So you go. I know. Pretty good, good job. Anyways, um, well, that's going to do it for us. Thank yeah. you again. Now for, I kind of want a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't bring it. Um, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Thank you, Bob, for uh, just helping us out and, and walking us through the game tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, remember to like, comment if you have any questions, subscribe, ring the bell if you want to get notified. And if you want to support us and be part of this awesome community, go ahead and check out the link in the description below, patreon.com slash night less call. That is going to do it for Bob and I. Um, I don't think... Uh, I don't think there's anything else left to say, but uh, thanks for joining us. And we'll Hopefully see you next time. you guys play it. <laughs> yeah. Hope you enjoy Dragon Bane. And we'll, we'll see you next time on Nights of Last Call. Bye, everybody. Peace.